Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Modern Day Debate. We are going to be debating tonight, is Earth the center of the solar system? And to start us out, 10 minutes on the floor, we have Austin Whitsett. Thank you for being here. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'm going to share my screen real quick. So I didn't extensively put this together, but we're going to go through it. So um, the question is, can the universe be geocentric, meaning Earth-centered? Can the Earth be in the center of the universe? So here I have, can the cosmos be rotating around a stationary Earth? And let's see. So where are we? There, Austin. I got to fix up my screen capture because everybody can't see it. If you want to just stop that for one second. Sure. So sorry about that. For some odd reason, it's displaying the wrong monitor. So I'm just going to move this over. Sorry about that, everybody. Hmm. Just one second. So sorry. There we go. Sorry about that, everybody. Let's carry on, and your PowerPoint's ready. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so I see the title says, like, is the Earth the center of the solar system? Not particularly the question, of course, um, but is the universe geocentric? So can the Earth be in the center of the universe? So here I have, can the cosmos be rotating around a stationary Earth? And uh, where we get the idea that we're not doing that is from Copernicus. And of course, that's a whole rabbit hole. If you've never looked into the history of heliocentrism and how it ties to the church and how kind of the mainstream claims about how that all went down are untrue, go watch Helio Sorcery. And you'll see very quickly what happened. It's pretty crazy. But anyway, that's where you get the Copernican principle, which is in physical cosmology, the Copernican principle states that humans on the earth or in the solar system or are not privileged observers of the universe. That observations from the earth are representative of observations from the average position in the universe. So it's the idea that the earth does not occupy a special or unique position. There's nothing significant or unique about it. Okay. So here we have my boy Albert Einstein saying, but when I was a student, I saw that experiments of this kind had already been made, in particular by your compatriot Mickelson. He proved that one does not notice anything on Earth that it moves, but that everything takes place on Earth as if the Earth is in a state of rest. Of course, what's funny is people will say, oh, you have to prove the Earth's not moving and all this. But actually, the default position is that the Earth's not moving. That's the default position. The claim is that actually... We are moving multiple vectors, mind you, but uh, he's talking about a test, of course, called Michelson-Morley. And what it is, is you shoot two perpendicular light beams. They get split in the middle. They go out to a mirror. They reflect, come back towards each other in the middle, and then go to a receiver. Whenever something is moving, right, based on what direction it's moving, it'll take one of the light beams longer to get to the receiver because it has to travel further, right, based on if it's moving with or against that motion. And so they developed this apparatus, and this is what it was expected to see. And when it says expected, the way that they got the expected value is they use the speed of light and the speed of the Earth. Okay, that's how we got the expected predicted value. It's called a friend shift. This is what was expected based on 30 kilometer per second orbit of the Earth, but this is what we got. Right. So the, what they said to try to explain it was that there was a contraction of the apparatus. This is what this is showing you right here. That the apparatus contracted and it just so happened to contract that it was the exact amount to compensate for this missing difference. And it makes it look like there is no difference. Now, actually, what they saw was was closer to this right here. Right. So there was a difference. It just wasn't what it was supposed to be. So long story short, they claim the apparatus contracted. Now, people will tell you that that's not the case. We can get into it tonight. That is just a fact. So th supposedly the apparatus contracted. You just can't tell. And it just makes it look like the Earth is stationary. This is one of the most famous tests in the history of physics. Um, I'm not keeping up with the time. Ryan, can you tell me how much time I have so I have an idea? 
Uh, you got about what five minutes, fifty seconds. Okay. Um. So it changed all. Yeah, changed all of physics. So here he is saying that um, he started thinking about when he's a student. He came across Mickelson experiment results. And he soon came to the conclusion that the idea, our idea about the motion of the Earth with respect to the ether is incorrect if we admit Mickelson's null result as a fact. This was the first path which led me to the special theory of relativity. Since then, I have come to the conclusion, uh, I have come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment, though the Earth is revolving around the sun. And if what's funny is people get all excited that he said it's revolving around the sun. Like, yeah, we know. He believes it is. He's literally... He's literally saying, even though he believes it is, he's come to the conclusion that no optical experiment can actually verify that. Here's a list of questions about Mickelson Morley. I'm not going to run through them right now in the opener. I can pull them up later. But the talking point is that Mickelson Morley did disproved the ether, had nothing to do with the motion of the Earth. Einstein didn't care about it, didn't know about it. That relativity had nothing to do with it. Blah, blah, blah. All of that is incorrect misinformation. If you run through these questions, it's very easy to debunk it. Here is another quote, and the people say this is cherry-picked. Well, we'll pull the papers up tonight if we need to. They're not cherry-picked, and what cherry-picked means is if put in, or quote mining, if put into proper context, it would mean something other than what is being claimed it means. Well, what am I claiming it means? That Einstein himself admits that you cannot use optical experiments to detect the motion of the Earth, and that you can't use terrestrial experiments to do that. So then if I go show you him saying that in context, that's not quote mining. That's not cherry picking. It's very simple. This is just a way to avoid the information. He says here to the question whether or not the motion of the earth in space can be made perceptible in terrestrial experiments. We've already remarked in section five that all attempts of this nature led to a negative result. And before he put relativity forward, it was difficult to become reconciled to it. Like I said, we'll pull the paper up because if you spam quote mining and cherry picking, it's showing that you're intellectually dishonest. So anyway, so this is this, a summarization of what happened. There was an issue on the table and it was um, while the earth may not be moving, it would, it would mean getting rid of the Copernican theory. So uh, Dayton Miller, did, so what they said was, oh, it was just instrumental error, the friendship that we did detect and that it contracted and time slowed down to create the illusion the earth wasn't moving. Dayton Miller's results, when he replicated it, showed indisputably that instrumental error could not be the explanation for the friend shift observed. The figures changed gradually throughout the year and attained their maximum dimensions around September 21st, which corresponds to the autumn equinox, and their minimum dimensions around March 21st, corresponding to the spring equinox. This cannot be random instrumental error. And this is Einstein himself saying that if what Miller was detecting was true, his entire theory would collapse like a house of cards. There's the quote. So I'm going to go kind of fast here, but then you get into uh, Hubble, right? And Hubble looks out and we get big telescopes. We look out deeper into space and we see, wow, everything's moving in relation to the earth. And the recessional velocity of the galaxies are making the earth look like it's in the center. That's not supposed to happen. So what do you say? It says here, the universe must be expanding. And in fact, it's accelerating and expanding at this point in all directions to what, once again, create the illusion that the Earth is stationary and in the center. You see a reoccurring theme here. So here is uh, the observations on a chart charted out with the telescope. So then we go to 1933. Fritz Wicke looked at a galaxy cluster, coma cluster specifically, and he saw that there was only about 1% ma of mass that was needed to keep the galaxies from escaping based on gravity. So direct refutation of relativity right there. Direct refutation, 1933, and it, it was debunked before that. A little side note here, actually, you can derive uh, Kepler's laws from Newton's laws, which means there is no dynamic value to the law in the first place. Literally, you can, can, you can do a kinematic derivation. You can get Kepler's laws from Newton's laws, and that's all it was. They you could the periodicity of it and then claim that there was some dynamics by changing values. Stellar parallax can literally be explained just by flipping the, the positions around. You get the exact same angles, flipping it around to the Earth being stationary. Stellar parallax does not prove it. Stellar aberration also does not prove it by switching the actual uh, position of the observer. It isn't exclusive. I'm running out of time to the um, to the Earth moving around space. So there's a lot more here. We'll just have to. We'll, what's up? Okay, there's a lot more in here, but we'll have to just kind of go through it during the debate. But long story short, then Mock came around and said, oh, you think that the uh, you thought that there's no way the Earth could be in the center, but you overlooked something, right? Even dynamically using Newton, the Earth could be in the center if you account for things outside the solar system, which he didn't know about. 
Um, and then we can get into the specifics of that, but you would have a net radially inward accelerative force that would keep the moving uh, uh, thing moving perpetually. Relational mechanics, Andreas sees, he breaks it all down. Uh, Dr. Luca Popov, Newtonian Machian analysis of the neo Tychonian model of planetary motions in the European Journal of Physics. What's so funny is people think they're prepared to say something about that, but I can't wait to get into it. And uh, basically everyone that knows anything, including even Newton himself, said that the Earth can, in fact, be in the center of the universe. So long story short, in conclusion, all observations have shown that, whether that be Aries failure, Michelson Morley, subsequent replications, uh, we have shown that the Earth is stationary with long distance observations into space. And what happens is the heliocentric model constantly makes up fairy tales like dark matter, dark, en dark energy, et cetera, to say that everything that exists is just an illusion to make you think the Earth is in the center of the universe, even though it's actually not. And that is a still man of the heliocentric model. So uh, yeah, hopefully we can get into it. Right. Sorry. Right. We'll end the screen share there. Excellent. And uh, yeah, just uh, thank you so much, uh, Austin, for your introductory statement. And I want to remind everybody hanging out in the live chat that we are a neutral debate platform. We're hosting debates on science, politics, and religion. We hope you feel welcome here. And Ozian, you have 10 minutes on the floor. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Witsit. And thank you for bringing up Copernicus, because I think this is central to the point that the Earth is not a preferred position within the universe but i don't think that's where we find value i think this is more of a philosophical question than it is a question about our physical location within the universe and i think that's central to this argument when it comes to like what's our worth and value within the universe and when we're talking about a central a centered worldview we're usually talking about like a culture center ethnic center country center religion like is it centered to ourselves our familial relationships, all life, or the universe overall. So I typically accept whatever the scientific consensus is as a belief, and belief is not a naughty word like a lot of people want to say. I would say it's a rational belief. It's just a proposition that I hold is true, is rational because it's justified by the uh, methodological naturalism that we've developed as humanities to justify that belief in the, the worldview that I hold to as true as the universe exists, which you seem to believe is true. The universe is flat, as far as we know, with a little bit of a hump in the center that we can know is true based on the cosmic background rate um, radiation. And there is no center. So any um, <clears throat> center of the universe is part, uh, pr privileged center of the universe really is a incoherent statement. So if you want to say, um, the center of the solar system is the sun because that's the greatest mass within the solar system. That's what you can say. If you want to say the center is in the earth because that's where we live, I have no problem with that as a worldview because that's how you sort of conceptualize the reality around you. So, And we can talk about the 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 science. I think it's sort of interesting where Isis um, gets his worldview, where Mach is getting his worldview from but as far as i'm concerned there is no center the, the geocentrism is false these mocking concepts you bring up are there's no um truth to the matter you can't prove that the earth is the center of the universe you can't prove that the sun is the center of the universe you can't prove there actually is a center of reality unless you can actually measure the entire size of, of our reality determine where the physical center is and you can't do that. So where you can get such type of ideas from is from it. See like uh, big bang cosmology is true. Evolution is true. You can get value like where centeredness from is from like something like the strong anthropic principle where you necessarily exist and your value and purpose your center comes from like divine providence where God decided that you would exist through his divine prov providence and your value and purpose in life comes from your necessary existence. So you don't have to be in the center of God's physical reality because according to God, that doesn't matter. Or you could come, you could be from an atheistic pr perspective, it could be something like the weak anthropic principle where um, the 
all past events must have necessarily existed have happened through evolutionary processes and the same type of processes for me to exist and my values come through those um, evolutionary processes through my psychology through my familial relationships with my children with my parents with my culture and with the society that i have around me so i think that's sort of where we get these type of purposes and values that we have and i think that's more important than this concept of where physical reality, whether the earth is flat. And let's be fair, you 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 typically argue that the world is flat. I know for this debate, you're arguing that we can conceptualize that the world is the center of the universe, but then you have to presuppose the sun is 93 million miles away. You have to presuppose that the Milky Way galaxy is actually a physical thing. You have to, if you go by the mocking conception of reality the newtonian conception of reality that gravity is actually true laws of motion are actually true all these other concepts are actually true um that these motions actually do exist the reason why um assis developed his idea of relational um, mechanics is because he didn't like creationist models he didn't like that um the catholic church was involved in Big Bang cosmology because he viewed Big Bang cosmology as a creationist story and he's an atheist. So he was trying to reify these concepts from Newtonian mechanics and um, uh, Machian concepts of um, the universe um, sort of rotating around the youth. And he believes like the universe is infinite in size and eternally exists because he doesn't believe energy can be created or destroyed. So if you hold to like Assis's relative mechanics sort of view of reality, you would have to hold that um, energy and matter can't be created or destroyed. It's eternally existed. The universe is infinite inside, so in size. So there is actually no center of the universe. So and and I and I'm I don't believe that's true. But if you believe his claims, and I think you would have to believe that is true i'd be interested in talking about popov too and with that i think i'd like to get into some of those um questions you wanted to get into in the open discussion and i'll leave it with that so we can talk about it awesome well thank you so much ozian for your opening statement as well and uh, just remind everybody once again both of our speakers will be linked in the description and uh, all of these debates are uploaded to our podcast form within 24 hours where our debaters will also be linked there also if you're watching live if you're subscribed on our youtube channel you can ask a super chat and those questions will be asked to our speakers at the end of our discussion uh, without further ado let's hand it over to austin to respond to some of what you just heard Let's get into open discussion. Yeah, so you said, um, like, there is no center to the universe, and to say that there is is just incoherent. Yes. Uh, okay, can you give me an example of anything else that exists that doesn't have a center? Um, anything else that exists that doesn't have a center? Um, is if I'm not saying the universe. We have to know the size of an object to know what the center of the object is. So with the universe itself, we don't know what the cent what the size of the universe is. Do you know what the size of the universe is to know what the center is? I don't know what the size of the universe is, no. So how would we know what the center is? Okay, well, um, if we're not moving, everything mm -hmm. moves around us that means that we're in the center. The way that we can know we're in the center is that everything moves around us and in relation to us, mm -hmm. right? You agree everything that if the Earth's not moving, we would be in the center of the perceivable universe. Everything moves around you. Uh, our location, yeah, as, as a... Me? The Earth, which is not an okay. object, actually, right? So, so the globe... Like everything moves around me personally. Why are you globe? doing this? If the Earth's not moving, would it be in the center of the universe? Well, I, I want to know how it's moving. Is it <laughs> rotating around us? Is the or is the universe physical moving? Is this what we're doing, bro? Yeah, like we just answer it. Why can't you just answer in good faith? I'm trying to answer the question. I need to know what this concept is for me to answer the question. Do You're I not. not? 
I said, if the Earth's not moving, would it be in the center if of the, the universe? Not necessarily. It depends on what you you mean by the universe. Can you tell me what the universe is? Everything that we can observe to be the universe. What is it? What's it made of? Totality of all things observed. What is it? What it? What does Why? that matter? In my worldview, I have a definition for what it is. I, I want to know we're talking about the same thing. When I see the universe, I mean all the physical matter, all the fields, all the um, energy um, that exists external to us. When I talk about the universe, that it interacts between with electromagnetic forces, strong weak nuclear forces, um, all that type of stuff. Is that what you're talking about when you're talking about the universe? I just said the totality of everything that's known to exist. Uh, totality. So, no, I don't. I don't. I believe that the totality of everything that um, exists could be more than we can see. Okay, uh, that's why I said known to exist. I've said perceivable universe. I like the word cosmos. Actually, it so, means order. This is so simple. If I the think Earth that, is not moving, it's in the center of the universe. So you think that the only things that you can touch, taste, um, see, smell, sense with your five senses are the only things that exist? I didn't say that. Okay, then there's more things that exist that you can, that you can sense, correct? I said the totality of what we know to exist or the you, perceivable universe. You know what perceivable means? Yes, so you're you're okay. so the perceived so so you don't think so what exists so to me the universe the reality is everything that exists just not what's perceivable so when I talk about the totality of the universe I mean everything that exists everything that exists just so when I say universe I mean everything that exists Josie and this know, is your, crazy your mic's clipping just a little bit you can. Now. Mine's clipping. Sorry, just, just a little tiny bit. I'll move closer. So when I no, see no, universe, no, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's clipping. It, it's is a little it hot. clipping now. No, it's a little hot. That's what I'm saying. Oh. But it, 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 yeah, it's okay. Well, I'm probably talking too loud. So when I see everything that when I see universe, I mean everything that exists, everything that exists. So we do mean different things. This is just sophistry, right? Because it's not sophistry. It is. No, because it's not. Explain to me how it's sophistry. Because it's you're using fallacious arguments with the intention. Explain to... how it's fallacious. I'm in the middle of talking. Okay, let's let him let's let him speak, Therosian. Yeah, sophistry is the use of fallacious arguments with the intention to deceive or mislead the audience. I mean, maybe it's not as much blatantly deception, but it's just like convoluting the conversation. It's not good faith because this should have been like a yes or no answer it's a binary question if the earth is not moving is it in the center of the universe and the answer is no. yes i'm so tell me where my lie is when we when we haven't agreed on what the definition of the universe is tell me where my lie is with it you're calling me a liar now tell me where my lie is when i see the universe i mean everything that exists is that what you mean by the universe if if you don't mean that by the universe then I am not lying. Okay. Everything that we see when we look out in the sky, Ozean, I've said it four different ways, the perceivable universe, cosmos, everything that we perceive or know to exist. We're talking about when we look out in the sky, we see a whole bunch of stuff. The current belief is that it's really, really big, that there are giant planets and stars and galaxies yes. and black holes and that we are tucked away in a little insignificant corner of the universe what yeah. i'm pointing out is that if the earth's not moving based on all the observations for example solar and sidereal rotation galaxy rotational speeds or positions we see that if we're not moving then the earth is in the center of the universe. That's why the current model says it's just an illusion that the Earth is in the center of the universe, right? No, it doesn't follow that we're in the center of the universe. There could be more stuff to that side of us in the universe than in that side of us in the universe. It doesn't follow that we're in the physical center 
of the universe unless you know the dimensions of the universe or the universe is infinite in size and if the universe is infinite in size and it's an incoherent statement to say we're in the center okay. of an infinite size a pill thing. to so, possibility what a pill to possibility that's not an appeal appeal to possibility the earth could be i mean the universe could be infinite and by the way yes. can you give me one example of something that's actually infinite in reality no okay so appealing to an impossible but that's what that's what Assis <laughs> believes it is. He believes the universe is infinite in size. Oh, so appeal to an authority of someone appealing yeah. to an impossibility. Yeah, a, a hostile witness, a person that you appeal to when it comes to your worldview. Who? Who? Assis, the guy for, that wrote Relative Mechanics, the guy that you appeal to for your worldview, a hostile witness towards your worldview, believes that the universe is infinite in size. That's how he gets to the idea, the concept, that the earth is in the center is because he says the universe is infinite in size. All or nothing fallacy. So like just because no, be I a genetic fallacy, but that's okay. No, a genetic fallacy is dismissing an argument based on the source of it. And what I'm saying is that you are trying to say somehow I must lean credence to this idea because I've invoked him before. And I, of course, didn't invoke his authority. I invoked the actual dynamic explanation that he shows. It's a dynamic equivalence. It's called relational mechanics. He shows that using both Einsteinian or Newtonian mechanics, the Earth can be in the center of the universe. I also don't claim sure. either of those things. I make this very clear, but everyone has to straw man it, right? Which is, I'm just pushing back against the claim that we know that the Earth's not in the center of the universe because within your own belief system, right? They, you have to concede a kinematic and a dynamic equivalence. So I, I think like, you're not really, why don't we just I have am, a good faith conversation? I am. I don't know if we're in the center of the universe or not, because I don't know where the center of the universe is. Okay, but do you get when you say the claim that there's a center to the universe is incoherent, is yes. ironic, because that would be the only yes. thing in all of existence that doesn't have some type of central point. And that doesn't mean that there's a point where the limit is equidistant from there, right? But a central point, a central point. Yeah, where's like, the center point of the universe? Let's say we flip something over and it has depth. Can we find the center of that depth? Uh, yes, we can find the center right. of something where we know that when we know the width of something, we can find the center of the depth of that. Of we the don't width have to know that thing. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you this: um, Do you believe in the Big Bang? Um, I accept it as the current cosmological model. Gupta, though, he just published a paper recently, sort of interesting that. He refused some um, cold dark matter, which I like, but we'll okay. see what happens. So do you so that obviously is the claim that the whole universe started in a singularity, right? Which is an okay. infinitesimally inconceivably small singular no. point. No, it doesn't conclude with the singularity. It's um that's a hyp singularity's hypothesis. It it so Gupta argues for a cyclic a CCC model, which is like a cyclical cosmological cycle like penrose roger penrose argued where it continuously expands and um like previous particles um expand under universes so he doesn't believe it like it began in any one state um if if you understand what i'm talking All about right, man. he believes in the ccc model okay so, so it does, if it didn't begin in a single why are you telling me what someone else believes Mainstream cosmology claims that there was a singularity no, and a big doesn't. bang that You're created wrong. the universe. So you disagree with the fact that everything started with the singularity? Yeah, modern cosmology doesn't say it started with the singularity. Where did it start? Um, expansion. What 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 was it doing before it expanded? Oh, uh, we don't know. Oh, uh, what where is it expanding from? We don't know. What was it According expanding to into? science, but I'm not a scientistic. I don't worship IV and DV. So I am a um, ontological naturalist. If you want to know my worldview, I get value and, and purpose and stuff from other ways and whether I'm in the center of reality or not. Um, so I don't care w whether I'm in the center of reality or not. That's not where I get value and purpose. 
if we want to talk about that, that would be a different no. discussion. I, I want to talk about how you couldn't have a singularity with everything expanding out from that point and then turn around and claim that there is no center because that's incoherent, right? Well, I never said there was a singularity, did I? So you deny mainstream cosmology, and that's fine. That's not mainstream cosmology. You're yes, wrong. it is. No, it's not. You're wrong. So Pull up a paper. Pull up the a... scientific consensus about the singularity being scientific consensus. Like well, that's what you find in in pop science, dude. That's no, pop science. Yes, that's it incorrect. Is. Okay, no, cool. If not. you don't believe in a singularity, I don't care. Okay, I don't believe in but this. This is this is the reality of what happened. This is the the. Let's just talk about how your belief system was crafted. My belief system. Yeah, your belief. What's system a belief? Was What's it? What's so, a belief? So we can be on the same page. What's a belief? Because you see, belief like that, it's an insult. Some, something that one accepts to be true. Okay, thank okay. you. So is yeah, my belief okay. justified? It certainly is not, and that's what we're about to discuss. Why is it not justified? What makes it unjustified? We're about to discuss that. Okay, can you just tell me why it wouldn't be justified then? Because it's not sufficiently supported with empirical evidence. It's you need evolved. It's effectively evolved into an unfalsifiable, well, move the goalpost, glorified reification fallacy. Well, that so, would be a straw man argument because I don't use empiricism to justify my beliefs. So. But that has nothing. Okay. You asked me why I think your belief isn't justified. Well, the then you would is, be straw manning me because the you answer don't know is, what I use to justify answer, my world. Then why would you ask me? You asked me why I think it's not justified. Because and the answer you is because, straw man your opponent with it. All right, let's live, let's give Austin a chance to speak. Just to try to hold your thought for one second there. The answer is that it's antithetical to all empirical evidence throughout the history of mankind, and you have developed an unfalsifiable reification fallacy. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Can we see if we can meet somewhere? What would be the default position regarding on? if the earth is in the center of the universe or stationary, or if the earth is actually moving all these different vectors, what would be the default position? I don't know. You don't know? No, the answer would be, I don't know. Do you know what Occam's razor is? Yeah, whatever has the least amount of elements would be the closest to the truth. Is most likely to be true. It's not always yeah. true, of course. Right? Most likely can, to be true, yeah. We can both agree that doesn't mean it actually is, but... Not yeah. really the point. The point is that if we start there, which is where you should always start logically, mm -hmm. then the earth does not move. Now, like when I say you, we don't feel the earth moving, I don't need you to jump in and say, but the reason is because I know why. That isn't really the point, though. The point is that that's the default position. And when we look up, we see everything move perpetually in a cycle over and over and over around us over and over. In fact, so much so, we developed entire constructs of time based on the reliability of those cycles, right? So then there's a claim that says, well, sure, it looks like everything is moving around us, but that's an illusion. Because actually, we are spinning, making it look like the sky is moving, and it's spinning in such a way it makes it feel like we're stationary, okay? So that could be true, but that is the next step. That's the additional claim, right? And so whenever people believe this and adopted it, right, that's when you start getting into, like, say, Copernicus, okay? And so when people thought, oh, well, maybe the Earth isn't special or unique in its positioning, and it's, it's small and the universe is huge or whatever, then we started making observations to see if that was true, and it didn't work. Okay, that's the part I want to get into is the history of how it was developed and the evidence that went against it. Like, let's start with Mickelson more. Well, okay, we're going to give, yeah, we're gonna let Rosian respond to some of what you yeah. just said. Yeah, first of all, like you're talking about the history of of a development and knowledge. You're not talking sort of like, but you're not talking about science. So when you're ta you're talking about the history, so the history of empiricism, I guess you're talking about. But like empiricism, like our knowledge of the universe evolved. Like I spent a whole week talking about ancient cosmologies and stuff like that. So if you look at like um, Central American cosmologies, they believed the world was what they saw within their own um, locale. They believed there were heavens above. They believed there was underworld below. They believed their world was confined by the, the place they could walk around. They also believed it was about their religious beliefs or cultural values 
there's cycles for harvest and stuff like that. If you go to biblical cosmologies of what they believe, they believe they could walk around their world. Like they didn't believe there were continents or anything like that. They believe their lands were all tied together. They could actually walk around it like in a couple of days. Like not like you they have to get on a ship to go somewhere else. They believed like the pillars were mountains, like that were bordering them. They because they could see them, they were there. Earthquakes and stuff like that, these were all things that they experienced every day. So when people want to reify the shape of the world to have continents and stuff with like the Gleason map, that is reification fallacy. So they're taking these concepts for the Bible and reify them to mean something else that they weren't intended to mean. So I understand with like Copernicus, there was like friction against that. But we don't get our purpose and values from the shape of the earth. We're not talking about the shape of the earth. No, I know, but we don't get our purpose and value from where the center of reality is. That that's not where we get our purpose and value. It doesn't matter where the earth is. Okay, but that's what the debate's about. Yeah, just for the, the debate is I about understand a, that. Yeah. And and yes, but you're talking about calendars and cycles and stuff from looking at the stars. Yeah, that's not how we determine time. Yes, it's how we got times, how we got calendars, how we got um how we did crops and stuff like that. It's how they did it all the world. I feel like you're stuff. trolling me almost. I'm not trolling you. Well, then, Ozian, let's talk about the subject, okay? And when I say that the Earth does not occupy a special or unique position, for those that don't know at home, that's called the Copernican Principle. It doesn't necessarily even discuss whether or not we are special as individuals or if there's a meaning or purpose. And no one said anything about that. Then why do you say I, special I, or unique? I, I, just one why does it matter if, 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 at if, all? If, if Austin has a specific example he was just about to go into, I know he wants to respond to what you just said, but if you can move into that uh, next topic just to get us back on track, uh, that would be yeah. uh, great. Thank you. Yeah, so that's just actually what it is. Special or unique, meaning the Earth does not occupy a special or unique position because if it was in the center, for example, it would be the most unique, the most special. But the idea is that it's it's no more special than any other place. And that's why I literally read the definition of the Copernican Principle. But let's just fast forward through, this, through the story, right? We have Kepler's laws. Right? So we have Copernicus. We have Kepler's laws. We have Newton claiming to do, uh, you know, gravitational or dynamic claim when actually you can actually flip it around and derive it. It's based on the periodicity of all of it. But anyway, we move forward. That's mass attracting mass. But Newton said, I don't really know what would be causing this. And it would have to be like a direct act of God. And it blows my mind. And there would have to be like an ether there for it to even work. But here I can kind of take Kepler's laws and then like reverse engineer uh, variables that and claim them that they're dynamic or whatever, right? So then we move forward, okay, with people believing that that's what's going on. And then we get to the point where we develop technology that could test that claim. So Newton and all the people before him thought that the sun, their model was the sun is in the center of the entire universe. That's what Newton thought. That's what everyone else before him claiming heliocentrism thought. That's what heliocentrism means. Feel free to right? jump It in. means earth center. I mean, sun-centered universe. Universe, yeah. So we both agree, obviously, that even within your own paradigm, that is no longer the case. Right. Right. So they, and they actually, if you read their uh, literature, they actually had like, esoteric belief systems about worshiping the sun and how the sun was symbolic of enlightenment and illumination and apotheosis, the path to becoming God. Like they literally, literally were in the practice of tracking all the way back to Horus, the sun God. That was their belief. Now, some of them maybe took it more of like a, a metaphysical enlightenment type of ideology as opposed to something physical. But some that is people, the truth. Some people but, did. Yeah, like the, we're talking about the main characters. Like, what did, what did Kepler... Do you know what Kepler claimed know. was going on in space? No. That the sun was singing some, like, uh, heavenly song, effectively, and that the sound it was emitting was so majestic, it caused everything to move around it. An acoustic orbit due to, like, the heavenly position of the sun. So anyway, the point is that we move forward and we start... That, that model changes... Well, because okay. Kepler, we discovered it was wrong. We discovered that Newton was wrong. Like, right. as far okay. as mainstream science is concerned, they were wrong. Okay, but then what happens is, these are all just ideas. And, and the idea was like, oh, we see everything moving around us, but we just can't feel us moving. And 
uh, here's a model of how we could all be going around the sun, the sun, the sun, the sun. They, they had a philosophical bias towards the sun. Literally, they write about it. They believe the sun was the most important thing in the in all of existence. They thought it was symbolic of enlightenment. Now, in your model now, the sun is insignificant. In fact, it's just another star, and it's not even a really big one. It's nothing special. So that shows that their philosophical foundation, their ideology when they created it, was so far off and ridiculous that that isn't science so we, at all, right? But that's, it's all good. It could still be true, I guess. But then we get to when we can use instruments to test it. We can do an actual experiment. We can do yeah. a measurement, a test. And then we get to Mickelson-Morley, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, do you agree that when we got to Mickelson-Morley, everyone was like super excited about how like innovative of a technology interferometry was everyone thought oh my gosh this is incredible like we can use light to make mind-blowingly precise measurements of motion and distance right well they thought they could they thought they could be able to detect the ether but you agree we can use light to measure motion and distance yeah we do it all the time right and like it's the most precise form of measurement. Um, I mean, we can do it. Some measurements we can't use the light to do, but yeah, we use radar. The most precise, though, right? Because it because sonar the... we sonar we can't use it underwater to do measurements. But yeah, it depends on the measurements. But yeah, it's relatively. I sort of agree. It's sonar, very precise. We're, we're talking about light, interferometry in light, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just I I I'm not trying to be like pedantic, but I. Yes, I agree. Okay, so Mickelson Morley, there was a prediction, and it was if we assume the Earth is tilted, spinning, and revolving around the sun, mm -hmm. and in order to explain the observations, it has to be moving 30 kilometers a second around the sun. And so if we take now, like we we had done many tests at the at the time with different mediums and stuff that showed that the the speed mm -hmm. of light, right, would would change based on the velocity of something moving. So like if you take a table and you spin it, all of a sudden it, it would be what you called the speed of light plus velocity. You could do it in water. It was done in water in like the early 1800s. They thought that, yes. But no, it was it was empirically measured and proven. What ended up happening was everything started changing uh, conceptually. The way people interpreted C plus V and proportional velocity changed. But before we get, I don't want to get into the weeds, right? Just to make sure everyone understands. They didn't prove it. They, they, they thought they were measuring that, yes. It consistently directly like if, if i if i spin something and then the rate at which i measure light the friend shift i get changes directly proportionate to how fast it moves yeah. that's what happens right then that is obviously logically you have to account for the velocity at which something moves and so much so you can predict what the friendship will be well this is what i want to talk about miguel morley because it's clearly do you agree it's like one of the most important experiments in the history of mankind um it helped to lead to a refutation of the ether you yeah, agree it changed like all of either. physics. It changed all of physics. Um, it it helped to like pave a way for relativity. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, like when Neil deGrasse Tyson says it's the most famous failed experiment of all time, he's not just saying that. That's what it's referred to as sure. in academic circles. Okay, so it was it changed all of physics. It threw away the ether, introduced relativity, introduced all kinds of things. A fourth dimension of space and time okay so the point is well i was 1915 but yeah it paved the way for theory of relativity but right, without einstein we wouldn't have got that change all of oh, what? we probably would have got it anyways there were other people working on relativity so okay maybe we'll have to do that. at the time everyone believed in newtonian mechanics and they believed yeah. in uh like newtonian gravity and they believed in the ether so let's like ask the questions that you said you wanted to go through about michelson morley because in, in for those who don't know you, you shoot light, okay? Just you shoot a light beam and then they use like a, a silvered mirror and they can, or a beam splitter. They can mm -hmm. split the beam. The reason they did that is because if you shoot the light out, say you shot two light beams out, there's no way to ensure that they're perfectly in phase with each other, right? So you can't really have reliable measurements. So you send one beam out and then you split it. That way you know that they're perfectly in phase and they, they go out perpendicular or orthogonal, they come back, right? Then they come back, recombine, and go to the receiver. Now, if, if the Earth is moving, right, then you should, what was understood to happen based on 
the way that it works, interferometry, that there should have been a displacement from one light beam to the other based on how fast the Earth is moving and what direction you were going. Okay, but they didn't get that. It's very simple. If you're swimming with the stream or swimming against it, you go different speeds. It's oh. if you're moving with the the orbit of the Earth through space, or you're going against it, then it's gonna the the light beam will have to go further distance, right? Based on the motion of the Earth, it has to catch up to the Earth effectively. All right, let's give them the it was based on it was based on two presuppositions. That was light being a wave, and that was um, that um waves had to travel through a mechanical medium so they were presupposing there must be a mechanical medium called the luminiferous ether that light was traveling traveling through that was part of the hypotheses so they were trying to measure that with the mickelson morley experiment all right look so we're they also assume the earth is orbiting was was that true was that the case though uh yeah they they believed that there but they was had a medium but did they have did they have other reasons to believe that the Earth was orbiting the Sun and was rotating? Well, around other than the, the axes? fact that no, other than the fact that it had just been accepted for so long, and so they always interpret what goes on in the sky that but it they, must be. No, but no. they did have other re they did have other justifications that they used to make those assumptions, right? Yeah, yeah, like Newton believed in worshiping the Sun, and but it wasn't based on worshiping the Sun. They had other observations. Right, I can pull them up. I know, I know what they are, but I'm trying. Okay, I'm then trying... let's just let's not straw man their position, their arguments, their own arguments. Let's not straw man them. Let's not straw man Mickels and Morley. Right? They they had they already um accepted the proposition that the Earth was orbiting the Sun and that the Earth was rotating along its axial tilt, and so the um what they were trying to test was if. There was an ether that, and they believed that light was a waveform. We've later concluded that light can be quantized and acts as a particle or a wave um, through the um, double slit experiment, right? So we right, can bro. quantize light and stuff like that. And can but that's that's later. Can I share my screen. What are you going to? I have like. I want to go through the questions. It seems like we're. Well, well, just before you share screen, let's let Ozzy and wrap up his uh, last of his thought there. If you got more to say. No. Okay. All right. Let's screen no, that's share. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I figured you'd jump right on that if you had something else. You to can say. just read the experiment. All right, you're yeah, up and running. Let's go through the questions. It falsified the ether. Okay. Did Mickelson Morley debunk the ether? Falsify it. Oh, it falsified it. So it did. Answers yes. Your answers yes. Okay. According to the authors of the paper, yes, they all no. They ether. said it. They said it falsified a stationary ether, the luminiferous ether. No, yes. stationary specifically. Okay, fine. That's what they called the luminiferous ether. Was a no, stationary ether. no. They didn't know if it had movement within it or if it was stationary. It's called the luminiferous ether, the light bearing ether, the medium okay. that sustains electromagnetic propagation. Okay, but they knew obviously that either the Earth. Is, could be stationary and there's a slight drift within the ether or the earth is orbiting through space and there is not a stationary ether that technically the ether could be moving with it so perfectly but of course that wouldn't work because you have a tilt and a wobble and, and a rotation and an orbit and all this other stuff yeah so anyway so they, uh, they, they falsified the stationary ether According yes. to the authors. Yes. According to the authors, correct. Okay. Is all that is needed to explain Mickelson Morley from within a heliocentric framework the removal of an ether? Um no, they, they needed other observations for what they had. Observations. Yeah, they had other observations to believe that the, we had an heliocentric framework. No, what I no, it's assuming that the heliocentric model is true. Right. Is the only thing that you need to do to explain the results in Mickelson Morley get rid of the ether? We've already established it was an unexpected result, right? Like I can pull yeah. on sign up saying it. So you had the problem with Lorentz and Fitzgerald that was trying to save the um the stationary ether by appealing to um length contraction because they wanted to save the stationary ether um to explain the results, but um of course you didn't have to do that. Okay, so what I'm asking you is obviously they expected to get a certain friendship based on the assumption the Earth is orbiting through space, okay? They did not get that. So they had to come up with some type of answer to explain why. 
I'm asking you if is it the only is the only thing you need to do is get rid of the ether to explain it within the heliocentric paradigm. Is that all you need to do? Yeah. Okay. His answer is yes. Mm -hmm. That is incorrect, though, because we know oh. that there were many other things done, and we can get into it in just a second. Okay. Can we use an interferometer to detect the motion of an object moving in a curved path, like the Sanyak effect, for example? As the Sanyak effect, you can measure the rotation of the Earth. So we can use interferometry to detect an object moving in a curved path. Uh, a ring laser gyroscope, you can measure the rotation of the Earth. So we can uh, use interferometry. We can use interferometry to detect the motion of an object. In a curve. Um, the rotation, the orbit of the Earth around I'll the sun it. is too slow. It, we can't make an interferometer large enough to detect the motion of the Earth around the sun. Okay, so the answer is yes. You can use interferometry to detect the motion of an object in a curved path. The answer is, can you do that without the existence of an ether? Yes. Right, okay, because you believe there is no ether. So then, mm -hmm. is the Earth moving in a curved path around the sun? Um. Yeah, we have satellite imagery, so. Okay, so can interferometry be used to detect an object such as the Earth moving in a curved path around the sun with or without an ether? Theoretically, but as far as I understand, you cannot build, we can't build one large enough to do so. Okay, so we made the point here, which is that you can't just get rid of the ether to explain it because your, your paradigm claims, for example, ring laser gyros, use interferometry, they can detect the motion of the earth, the rotation of the earth, it has nothing, you don't need an ether for that. So just getting rid of the ether doesn't help you. So what they did was that you end up getting relativity. And what they claimed was Newton was wrong. They mm -hmm. claimed Newton was wrong because Newton said that an object will continue in a straight path unless an outside force acts upon it. And this is important at, the audience just stay with me. This is super important. This changed all physics this is why people still think the earth can be flying through space, even though it clearly isn't. So Newtonian mechanics was proven. Newtonian gravity was proven wrong. Um, I'll let, I'll let you answer because Newton said an object will continue in a straight path unless an outside force acts upon it. So he claimed mm -hmm. that there was a force called gravity from the sun acting on the earth, pulling it around it in a curved path. Right. But, but we didn't yeah. detect it. So what did Einstein do? Einstein came in, said Newton was wrong. Actually, gravity isn't a force. We are free falling in a linear path, right? We're free falling in a linear path, not a curved path from the perspective or, or reference room of the earth. It's straight. And that's why you're not able to detect it with interferometry because that combined with space contraction and time dilation. Go ahead. So um, Newtonian dynamics... Um, required a, appeal to pseudo forces called um, central pedal and central fugal force to explain um, orbital mechanics, to explain Kepler's laws, um, which um, wasn't required for general relativity. So under general relativity, the orbits find the path of like least resistance um, around the sun. So we don't have to appeal to central pedal and central fugal forces um, with the theory of relativity, just to okay. clarify that. But the point is really simple. We thought the, they, they thought the earth was moving around the sun in an orbit. Mm -hmm. And so it was supposedly moving 30 kilometers a second. So using that value, the velocity of light and the velocity of the earth, you can then predict how much of a friendship, a separation between the light beams there should be based on how fast the earth is moving. They did not observe that. So Einstein can't comes in and tries to help them fix it. The way he does this is say Newtonian gravity. We just now we just now read Einstein specifically saying that he came across the results of special relativity and that was the first or, or of Michelson Morley and that was the first path that led him to special relativity. But the point is that they said, oh well, we're not actually there's gravity's not a force acting on the Earth pulling it in a curved path around the Sun. It's actually free falling in a linear path, a straight path. Right. And it, that there's no actual force acting upon it. So you can't detect it with interferometry. Then they said that in in relation to the sun, which is where we're supposedly orbiting, right? All motions relative in relativity. So you can never say something is moving 
unless you say it in relation to something else. So the earth orbits mm -hmm. in relation to the sun. So what Einstein says is that the apparatus contracted in the direction of motion relative to the sun and that time slowed down just a sufficient amount to compensate for the missing time difference and make it look like the earth is stationary. It's not what Einstein said, um, but that's what um, Fitzgerald and her um, Lawrence and Fitzgerald said to, to save the ether. This is what Einstein said. So uh, by the basis of theory of relativity, the method of interpretation is, is incomparably more satisfactory, which is appealing to the Occam's razor, which is what he's doing. According to this theory, there is no such thing. This is after your quote that you posted earlier. According to this theory, there's no such thing as a specially favored unique coordinate system to occasion the introduction of the ether idea and hence, there could be no ether drift or any experiment with which to demonstrate it. Here, the contraction of moving bodies follows from the two fundamental principles of this theory without the introduction of a particular hypothesis as a prime factor involved in this contraction. We find not the motion in itself to which we cannot attach any meaning but the re motion with respect to the body of reference chosen in the particular case in point. Thus, for a coordinate system moving with the Earth, the mirror system of Michelson Morley is not shortened, but is shortened for a coordinate system which is at rest relatively to the sun. Feel so it's that. not exactly. shortened. It's shortened for a coordinate system relative to the sun. So it's not actually shortened. Right, but, That's what I just said, though. I, I just said in re, in relation to the sun, because our alleged orbit is motion relative to in relation to the sun. That's what we're supposedly orbiting around. So that in in re, like relative to our motion around the sun, the apparatus is contracting. Now here is, but I, you understand I want, it's it's not actually physically contracting, though, right? You, it's not. Well, contracting. Einstein specifically said that it is physical, and everyone claiming that it's optical it's, is incorrect. It's not. Hey, do you see? Do you see? I have. Oh, is he sharing too? No, I'm not sharing. Uh, okay, so look, I'm going to show this real quick, right? So here's what he said. In one of the most notable of these attempts, what attempts is he talking about? He's talking about the attempts to measure the motion of the Earth in space, right? And he's determined that, you know, you can't do it with any terrestrial experiment because they're all negative and I had to put relativity forward. In the most notable of these attempts, Mickelson devised a method which appears though as though it must be decisive, right? Okay, so yeah. then he explains, he explains how the test works. He comes down here and he says... The same quote I had up. When the body is moving perpendicularly to the planes of the mirrors from that resulting when the motion is parallel to these planes, although the estimated difference between these two times is exceedingly small, Mickelson and Morley performed an experiment involving interference in which this difference should have been clearly detectable. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the experiment gave a negative result, a fact very perplexing to physicists. Lorenz and Fitzgerald rescued this dip, the theory from this difficulty by assuming that the motion of the body relative to the ether produces a contraction of the body in the direction of motion, the amount of contraction being just sufficient to compensate for the difference in time mentioned above. Comparison with the discussion in section 12 shows that from the standpoint also of the theory of relativity, this solution of the difficulty was the right one. And mm -hmm. what was the solution to the difficulty? To say that the object was contracting in the direction of motion just a sufficient amount to compensate for the missing time difference, which should have been exceedingly small, but still should have been there and been clearly detectable because of interferometry. So Einstein himself says that from the standpoint also of relativity, the, the body was contracted in relation to motion to compensate for the missing time difference. He then says, but the interpretation is more satisfying with relativity because of the bias with space and time, meaning they, there's a different interpretation from relativity. Well, it's more satisfactory because it meets Occam razors. It has less assumptions because 
Fitz, uh, Lawrence and Fitzgeralds are appealing to multiple um, concepts where he's just appealing to his two concepts of light is um, constant in all frames of reference and the laws of physics are constant in all frames of reference. But he goes on to clarify this in the rest of this quote, which you're not covering, which is... Dude, does I for just... Bro, I know I, we just... I, I brought that up because you but, read this just a second ago, right? But he's Why not we... seeing... He's not seeing it actually shortens. Oh my gosh. Yet, it, yes, he is. He's no, he's it, not. It sh read the last part again. But it is but it's shortened. shortened for a quartan system, which is at rest relative to the sun. Okay. All right, leave so now, respond. okay, the earth is supposedly orbiting. What is the earth supposedly orbiting? Okay. Does for a quartan system moving with the earth, the mirror system of Mickelson Morley is not shortened. The mirror system, Mickelson Morley system is not shortened. Yes. Meaning if you have a coordinate system on the earth that's that's moving with the earth, then it's not going to be shortened for you. And the yeah. actual reason for that is because the shortening that's happening is in the in the coordinate system of in relation to the sun. Yeah. Right? So if you so everything's at contracting sun, at the same rate. So if you're so if you're at mind, the sun, you guys don't understand this. So if you're at the sun, it looks from the sun's perspective, it looks like it's shortening. Yeah. Now but he from also his perspective, it's not shortening. Okay. okay. I I said that when okay. you're on the earth, it's not going to shorten for you. Okay. It's going to shorten. It's not in shortening. Right, it's just appearance give, of shortening. Let's give Austin at least 30 seconds to respond, and then we'll kick it back. It's going to shorten in relation to the sun. When we're talking about the orbit of the earth then we're talking about it orbits in relation to the sun, which means when the earth is orbiting in relation to the sun, the apparatus will contract in relation to the motion around the sun. So when you're on the earth, you're not going to see any contraction. It's not going to contract for you. It contracts in the coordinate system of the sun. Okay. But that's the whole point. We're trying to see about if it is actually, that's why he says that we see also from the standpoint of relativity, that that solution to the difficulty was the right one. So why would he be saying that the solution to the difficulty, according to relativity, is the same one as the body contracting in relation to motion, if what he meant was it has nothing to do with it? It's There's not, no way around it. It's not physically contracting, right? It's physically contracting relative to the two coordinate systems, which is the, all, the whole idea of theory of relativity. Well, he, he actually has a quote. He came out and he said, there seems to be a lot of confusion in the matter of contraction. I see, I hear people falsely claiming that it's merely optical, but that is not true. It is a real physical phenomena in that it can be measured. Now, it, well, I want to get caught in the weeds. I want, I want everyone to know the truth, though. They didn't detect the motion of the Earth when they expected to. So what did they do? They had option one, except the Earth's not moving because the interferometry was super precise and should definitely have measured it. It was over 10 yeah. times more sensitive than it needed to be. So you could just accept the Earth's not moving. Option B or option two, whatever. The next option is throw, throw out all of physics and change it. And that's what they did. And no. they claimed that the Earth, the Earth is orbiting the sun with no ether. That time slows down. There's time dilation, that there's length contraction, the speed of light is constant, that the gravity is not a force, and that we're free falling in a straight path. We're just curving at the same time, but we can't tell from the earth. Okay. So we can agree on that. They did all those mental gymnastics. It basically, it is, yeah, the earth is moving, but there's a st stubbornly persistent illusion that makes it look like we are stationary. Right. No, you're appealing to an early 20th century test to determine that we can no longer, that we can't measure. The motion no, it, of the earth? No, it's just important to, for people to understand what happened. This is the only reason relativity... Dude, Einstein said himself... That but the, that was that in that... It, go ahead. I he said if it wasn't for Mickelson... The, the, he said like the embarrassment of Mickelson Morley. The embarrassing result of Mickelson Morley. If it wasn't for that, that no one would have even considered relativity as a halfway yeah. redemption. That's what he said. So that's the reason people had to accept relativity because they needed it to explain why we don't detect the earth moving. That's a fact. How does this support geocentrism? And what? It, it would and if you if the hypothesis was that the um earth was moving relative to a stationary ether, just to be clear, so they they falsified the idea that would 
the earth that's what we agreed on that the earth was moving relative to a stationary ether so how does this prove geocentrism how does this okay um, okay, okay. Support geocentrism? because that was not the hypothesis they never hypothesized that the geocentrism or Helio that's irrelevant was true it has nothing to do with either claim it has okay let me ask you this let me ask you this with heliocentrism or geocentrism let me ask you this if the earth is stationary and the universe is geocentric right uh and we create an instrument that can measure motion of the earth and it goes to try to measure the earth in motion mm -hmm. what would you get what would be the prediction of a stationary geocentric earth what would be the prediction if we if we used interferometry to try to measure the motion of earth but the earth was actually stationary and the universe was geocentric right the earth was actually stationary then what would be your result what would be the prediction of a geocentric earth or universe why am i limited to just interferometry why can i because that's what we're, we're talking about that test the answer is that what? you would not you would not expect to detect any motion because the Earth is not in motion. Why can I use satellites? Why are you why are you why are you ignoring it? So the heliocentric model had a prediction that we would have fringe shift based on thirty kilometers a second. The geocentric model has a prediction that we're not going to measure motion, and the the actual evidence matched geocentrism. That's just a fact. So instead of accepting the evidence for what it is. They just threw all of physics out, threw all the fatherheads of electrical field theory, threw out the antecedent to propagation, the antecedent to waving motion. They threw everything out. They flipped the whole world of physics on its head so they could keep the belief that the Earth was moving around the sun. That is that is a accurate no. depiction of history. No, it's not because the Michaels and Morley hypothesis had nothing to do with heliocentrism or geocentrism. Your your you're not being honest about their claim, which is sophistry. So stop being a sophist. Stop trying to deceive people about what Mickelson Morley um, experiment was about, which was about if Earth was moving through a stationary luminiferous ether, which is what they claimed they falsified. And nothing to do with geocentrism had nothing to do with it if the Earth was the center of the universe or not. That claim was not falsified. It was not proven. So show me a test that proves, that demonstrates that the Earth is stationary. It, that is not, uh, what was the claim? That's not the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is nonsense. Null hypothesis would be a measurement that would be outside of expectations. So I can okay, show dude. that the Earth is moving. I can show the Earth is moving. We have satellites that we can watch that the, the, the sun goes that the earth goes around the sun that shows that you also don't understand your own model because in order to determine whether or not the earth is in the center of the universe you have to get outside of the galaxy in your own model but please don't run away yes. from the point don't run away from the you can't get outside of your own galaxy in that's your what own i belief. said it that was my opening argument you, you can't just said that you can send center... a satellite out and prove it you're wrong no. you don't understand the kinematic equivalence but what i want to not run away from so we can actually move on so you don't know what the center I, I didn't is. claim exactly Ozean, my point Ozean, it, this is this is what frustrates me so much idea. about the conversation is you guys have a disingenuous you guys script. Talk, you're talking to me what script yeah, I, I, you're you're saying it a disingenuous script to say that I'm claiming that he's a flat earther or that he was a geocentrist or that the test was about. I didn't say any of that. They assumed the earth was moving around the sun. They assumed that there was an ether. The test was not about either one of those things. The test was not to prove the ether. You are objectively wrong. The test You're was to determine the test was to determine if the velocity of light was constant in relation to the assumed motion through the assumed ether. That's what it was actually about. You guys don't even understand what it was about. But they got an unexpected result, a perplexing result, as Einstein just said, which was that there wasn't the predicted fringe shift. Okay? Now, there actually yeah. was a fringe shift, though. So, yeah. it, we can't be detecting the Earth orbiting. We, got, we, we, we can't be detecting the Earth orbiting. But what was the fringe shift that we did get? Why did we one, get a friendship? We'll give OZ one a six of their one six of their expected result. They determined it was instrument error. How did they determine that? Um, because all um, instruments have errors, so I'm sure they had a calibration standard. It was within whatever their calibration standard was.
I fell outside of it, actually. It fell. So how far outside of their calibration standard was it? Pretty far. And then the, su- do the I don't remember the exact values, but then the subsequent, the subsequent test, because it was over 10 times more sensitive than it needed to be. I know. So way, way more than like one six. I mean, it was 10 times more sensitive than it needed to be. And then the subsequent test got even more. Um, they did say instrumental error, but that's because if that's an accurate measurement, it completely refutes relativity. It completely refutes heliocentrism. To quote Einstein, if if it's correct, his entire theory collapses like a house of cards. And, and you agree that without relativity, the Earth is in the center of the universe, according to Michelson Morley. All right, we got to give no. Ozean a chance to respond to some of the things that you've thrown out there. So uh, go ahead, uh, Ozean, we'll give you a minute no, and a half there. No, like you said, we can't. We can't know if the universe is the center of the, we can't know if the earth is the center unless we can go actually outside of the universe and measure the universe. We can't know if the earth is the center unless we can go outside the universe, not outside the galaxy. We'd have to go outside of the universe, measure the universe to know where the center is. Okay, dude. I know what I, what I actually did was rebut your claim that we can know the earth moves around the sun because we can send satellites out into space and see it. And I pointed out that even in your own paradigm, that wouldn't prove what is moving. Okay. You would have to get the only way you could supposedly prove that the earth's not in the center of the universe in your own belief, because I don't believe in your second law of thermodynamics violation, magic fairy tale that only the government can go to, but say that it was real and they go out there into space which again, they're not, but if they did, they would have to get outside of our uh, outside of our galaxy in your belief system. because They'd have to see that redshift was distributing evenly to your new position. When we see redshift in relation to our galaxy. Do you understand? We see redshift in relation to our galaxy, which means you would have to get outside of our galaxy to see that it's, it makes everywhere look like it's in the center. Like, I guess we can move on from Mickelson Morley, right? Like, it, clearly the test showed exactly what it would show if the Earth was stationary. And the heliocentric model had to be revised to try to explain why it looked like the Earth was stationary. Correct? Do you agree that it that it, a solution to Mickelson Morley is just that the Earth is stationary? No, because it wasn't a hypothesis that they formalized. It wasn't Doesn't what they matter. were testing. I didn't ask- and that's it what does I- it does matter because it wasn't one of the assumptions for their test you can't reify their test i didn't ask you about a hypothesis i said do you agree that a solution for no. mickelson morley's results could be just that the earth is stationary no why not because it wasn't one of the hypotheses for their test that doesn't matter so ronald ronald clark the problem which now faced science was considerable where there seemed to be only three alternatives. The first was that the Earth was standing still, which meant scuttling the whole Copernican theory and was unthinkable. Is Ronald W. Clark wrong when he says that about Michelson Morley? I don't know if he's right or wrong. Oh, well, okay. Edward Morley, Albert Michelson, Arthur Eddington, Albert Einstein, right? And everyone else that wrote about it, that was a physicist, and I'm not going to the theory, it's just common sense, acknowledged that it made it look like the Earth was stationary. Okay? It made it look like the Earth was stationary. That's why Einstein comes in and says, yeah, but all motion's relative. You can never really know. And that the the two statements, the Earth uh, revolves around the sun or the sun revolves around the Earth are equally valid. They're just coordinates. Okay, yeah. so a solution to it would be that the Earth is stationary, obviously. That's obvious. I mean, everyone admits it. Like, that's why I read the quote from Einstein. He says right here, let me read the quote from Einstein. All right, let's do it that. Says, we need to seed some time because... Uh, <laughs> you can just read it. Yeah, it's okay. But when I, w- when I was a student, I saw that experiments of this kind had already been made, in particular by your compatriot, Mickelson. He proved that one does not notice anything on Earth that it moves, but that everything takes place on Earth as if the Earth is in a state of rest. That is Albert Einstein talking about Michael Simorley. He believed in general relativity, special relativity. Okay, but you agree he is clearly acknowledging that it makes the Earth appear to be in, at rest, according to Michael Simorley. He believes in relative frames of reference, so relative coordinate systems that you you have to like to measure movement of any other thing. You have to um, have two locales, right? So I I don't see any problems with that statement. Einstein like, that said that of... 
Mickelson Morley proved that everything happens on the earth as if the earth is in a state of rest. Okay. Okay. So then when I asked you, do you agree that a solution to Mickelson Morley could just be that the earth is stationary? The answer is yes. Even according to the very person that created your own theory and model. That's not what it proves. It proves you can consider anything at rest. I didn't say it proved anything. I asked you if it was a solution to the results. It could. No. Why not? I, so I, I'm not going to be held to a position that the earth could be considered the only thing that's at rest. I can consider myself to be at rest and everything else is in motion. So I can consider the sun to be at rest and everything else is in motion. I can consider the, if there is a center of the universe to be at rest and everything else is in motion. That's the idea of relativity. Hey man, like it's so simple. That's not sophistry. We'll, by the we'll way. let the we'll let the. Oh, can I consider the Earth to be at rest and everything else is in motion? Absolutely. Can I consider okay. my microphone to be at rest and everything else in motion around my microphone? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so That's at the, the time of relativity, at the time they expected to see a friend shift based on the assumed orbit of the Earth. They did not see that. So what happened was they had to throw Newtonian gravity out. They had to throw away the assumption of the first law of Newtonian mechanics when it came to the Earth, right? Which is, which is based on inertia because it should have just continued to go in the same path unless an outside force acted upon it. And they, so they threw out Newton. Michael Simorley debunked Newtonian gravity when it comes to the Earth and its orbit. And it changed everything, right, in physics. And it got rid of their understanding of the ether. They had to do all of that to keep the earth moving around the sun. Now we can move forward. I, we both agree that relativity says that the earth uh, could either be in the center and be stationary, or it could be moving around the sun because of relative motion. Either the earth could be moving around the sun or the sun could be moving around the earth. Uh, no, I don't believe there's any center, but I believe that you can consider anything to be, um, the center reference frame to measure anything else. Okay, so do you agree relativity says that it's equally valid to say the Earth moves around the sun or the sun moves around the Earth? Under general relativity, yes, because you right. can make okay. calculations using that method, but the mm -hmm. other methods don't seem to work very well. So this goes back to, so if the Earth is moving around the sun, right, then it's going to show that the Earth is stationary. This comes back to our first question is it was mm -hmm. if the earth is stationary, you agree that it, it would mean geocentricity. It, it would be geocentric universe if the earth is not moving at all. And you wouldn't answer that for some reason. But the answer is, of course, yes. Right. That's why I can quote all the all the people that brought you your belief talking about it's that. Not with geocentrism and geocentrism would be like um, absolute space. I don't believe. So there's an absolute center of anything unless you know the size of that physical domain. So unless you can tell me the size of reality, I, I don't know what the center would be. This is crazy. So I I of the let's just say, would if the earth is stationary, would that mean that it's the center of the perceivable, observable universe? No, if you want to hold it as the center to measure the movement of other objects. That's just Crazy. a reference frame to do measurements. Well, you're just wrong. So then we can move I'm forward. Not. How, how am I wrong? Are you just using to make measurements of other reference frames? So that's fine. If you're seeing it centered, why you want it? Why does it matter if the earth is centered? Well, we're not talking about why it matters. We're talking about how it's just a fact that if the earth is stationary, that it would be in the center. But it's, it's all, why, we can talk. Why, if why it's does it matter? Why is it? Why is it why if it's stationary does it have to be center? Because based on all observations that we see, we see an equidistant limit in all directions. They call it the visible universe. Your model claims it's 46 billion light years away. We see that there's even distribution or what people call redshift. We see that even distant galaxies move in relation to the earth. The recessional velocities move in relation to the earth. Well, that's just black. the limits of our physical, like optical limits of our, our of what we can see. That's the limit. Of How the does that explain recessional velocity? Can you just answer the questions? You think just the limits of what we can perceive is the limits of the size of the universe? Well, I'm not making a claim if it is or isn't the limit of the universe. Then right? Why Which... did you ask the question? Because I'm not I'm... making that claim. 
Okay, this is pretty simple. Your, and we're not talking about, oh, say, say you have a limit to how far you can see in each direction. Sure, it would look like you're in the center because you can only see so far and you would be able to see the same distance in each direction. Sure. So it would look like you're in the center. That's not what this is about. I don't know why people say that. It's about the fact that even distant galaxies move in relation to the earth and that everything's red shifting and they claim that means it's moving away. It isn't about how far we can see. It's about how everything else in the sky is moving in relation to the earth. That fast forwards us to the 1920s. It was a okay. yes or no question though. Do you think what we can perceive from earth is a limit of what actually exists? I don't know. Okay, then why did you ask me the question? I said, I don't know. I, I, I think that we could I even asked, see- how did you know what the center is? No, I said the perceivable observable universe. So you, well, how do you know that's all that exists? I didn't say that is all that exists. Well, then how do you all, know it's the center? You're just going to go back to appealing to possibilities again, but we're talking about what the evidence shows. This well, is then the it's truth. Not what the evidence shows, so you're an empiricist, you only accept what's true based on science? No, intuitively, we all know that we're special. If you want to talk about a philosophical thing, we all know that this place is very special. We all know that we're given a perfect nightlight and a perfect daylight, that we have beautiful nature that provides for us, that one seed out of an apple makes a million apples if you want it. Everything is incredibly beautiful. I can make a little mini version of myself. My wife and I can make little beautiful mini, mini me's, right? The, the place that we live is incredible and very special and everything moves around it. And in fact, we have a beautiful light show in the sky that's so reliable. We can use it to make calendars, dude. We can use it to know where we are, when we're seeing what we're seeing within forever. Okay. Then, so then so, this doesn't matter. This conversation, because you don't actually believe that the universe exists. You don't believe the sun is 93 million miles away. What you care about is what makes you special. No, that's not true. The, uh, what I care about is truth. Okay, and what well, I then discovered. Let's talk about what's true. Which that's is, what that's what we're doing. You, with it. you don't believe it's true that the universe exists. You don't believe it's true that the sun is ninety three million miles away. So why are you arguing for it? The sun doesn't. What the sun doesn't have to be ninety three million miles away. Is what you're it trying not to sophistry for you to argue that the Mickelson Morley experiment was even a legitimate experiment. Isn't it sophistry to argue that there's galaxies, the Milky Way galaxy exists? All right, let's let's try to back it up just a little bit here, back to the topic of our debate. Somebody had asked uh, earlier in the live chat, I'm so sorry you can remind me who you were, uh, if you guys could take a moment and uh, just explain what the solar system, what that what that means to you uh, as a term. So uh, let's uh, let's give it a minute so that uh, we can kind of clarify on that. Because the topic of our debate is, is Earth the center of the solar system? So uh, let's I didn't agree to that debate. It's an incoherent oh. question and it doesn't make any sense. And I tried to tell you guys that. But I mean, we, we could answer the question, what is the solar system to us? But I, I never said that the Earth is in the center of the solar system. I don't believe in the solar system, but... We can still answer it, I guess. Ozan, Ozan, you know that's not what my position is, right? You know that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Feel free to clarify. I'm sorry. I don't want to put... And uh, it's not my argument either. Because it's not my argument, argument either. Geocentrism, for his view, under the uh, pop of... Because I've read the pop of paper, the second one. I didn't uh, yeah, I don't believe thing. his theory either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I have you know I just think it's the center of the cosmos. I don't necessarily believe in what people claim about the solar system. I don't have to believe the distance to the sun. I don't have to believe the supposed that. size of it's the just... sun. I don't have to believe there's a vacuum or the size of the planets, right? Like that's not really the point. The point is that the earth, all observations show the earth in the center. It could be more dense. The stuff could be way more local. It could be finite. It could be way younger. And that's all direct quotes from Edwin Hubble. He says, really, everything could be way more dense. Everything could be way closer to us and smaller. And the universe could be suspiciously young and it could be finite. And it would give us the same observations. I, if we I, were could, be a, I could be a brain in a bat. Solipsism could be true. Like these are philosophical questions, not for the, empiricism. For the sake of our audience, if you could also answer the question just about the solar system. I think we got our answer from Austin there. So uh, if you want to go ahead and give it a shot and then uh, we'll carry on. 
our solar system, I don't know, like if you have an asteroid belt, we have supposedly only eight planets now and they took away Pluto and Pluto has its two moons or something. I don't know. That's there's two things about the same size. And uh yeah, sure. It's close enough. I want the planet names, Mercury, Venus, um, Mars, Earth, Saturn. Um I think we're all right. <laughs> that's, Jupiter. That's the, Uranus, we thank you for that. Not um, my anus. <laughs> This is like, go I'm ahead, not gonna lie, this in. is pretty painful. You can go because, ahead and like, jump in if you want. We're just not talking concisely about the actual subject the whole time. And it's weird to me because it's pretty simple. It's like the default position is that the earth is in the center of the universe. When you say it doesn't, I don't care about if it is or not, I only care about uh, being special. Can it isn't true. It can isn't you explain true. to me? Can you explain let to me, me how yeah, that's let the me explain position? It. Let me explain it. That isn't true. What I care about is truth. And last time I said that, you interjected and didn't let me finish. So I'm saying I care about what is true, right? And what we were told is that we know the Earth's not the center of the universe. It's a definitive scientific fact that the Earth is actually revolving around the sun, and that it's shooting through the galaxy in this ever-expanding huge universe with the size that's inconceivable, 46 billion light years, and one light year is 5.88 trillion miles so 5.88 trillion times 46 billion miles we're just like insignificant little tiny speck of dust in mm -hmm. in terms of where we are okay they we were not told like oh that's one of the options it's called the copernican principle it's a philosophy that we think it's more logical that the earth wouldn't be in a special place we were taught that it's science that it's definitive and that it had been proven people are being lied to that is not the case in fact, the default position is that the earth is in the center. I think truth is important. I think when you tell a child that they're a tiny speck of dust in an ever-expanding universe of nothingness, that they think it may make sense that they are meaningless and that it's just random. It literally can develop people's worldviews. But regardless of that, truth is important. Would you not agree with that? Absolutely. But I, I think our person our purpose and values should not stem from where our physical location is in the universe. I think our purpose and values should stem from our familial relationships, from our um, family, from our culture, from our ethnicity, from our religion. Like I, I know I, I I'm pretty sure you're a Christian, right? What's it? So you have a lot of find a lot of value and purpose from those beliefs. I don't think it shouldn't matter. It, and, it, that the earth is the center of the universe or not and you don't believe in the universe so like um what and you don't believe the universe exists i like, believe that what's in the sky exists oh Zane. i don't believe in what fairy tales people have made up about it but that's not what i mean by the universe that's why i asked you early on what you meant by the word universe so said, you didn't see answer the, the question because you're trying to hide it because the, the base supposed to be about geocentrism. And then you accuse me of being a sophist, but I didn't try to hide anything. I answered it five times. I said, what we see in the sky, okay, I said the perceivable the observable universe. Let's just run through this. Okay. There's no actual evidence that the earth is moving through space. The default position is that it's stationary. The, the heliocentric model made a prediction, which was that we would measure the earth moving with interferometry. Because the Earth has got to be flying through space at 30 kilometers a second if that model is true. What happened when we used interferometry to measure it? It showed the Earth is not moving. That was the most precise form of measurement that existed on Earth and still is to this day. It showed the Earth's not moving. Geocentrism predicts you're not going to measure the Earth moving through space because it's not moving. Heliocentrism predicts you're going to get a fringe shift based on 30 kilometers a second. We didn't get it. It matched this geocentrism. But what do they do? They throw out everything they need to in physics, make up fairy tales, talk about space and time being physical and all stuff to try to say, well, it's just an illusion that the earth is not moving. Then we fast forward to the 20s. And we start making observations when you come, that's when you get Edwin Hubble. And we got these huge telescopes and all of a sudden we could see way mm -hmm. further into space, right? Well, the geocentric model says, no matter how far out into space you look, what you're going to see is that the earth is in the center of all of it. And that everything that exists is going to be moving in relation to the earth. 
And then the heliocentric model says, oh, well, this is a tiny speck of dust in an ever expanding universe. You're going to see things moving every which way. You're going to see things moving all over the place, right? Red shift here, blue shift here, things moving everywhere because we're just a tiny speck of dust. And, I, and of course, at the time, they said that everything was moving away from the, the, the singularity of the Big Bang. Okay, and then I'll let you go here. So we got Mickelson Morley. It matched geocentrism. Okay, and when evidence falsifies a theory, you're supposed to throw it away, but that's not what happens when people are religious. And then we have the, the next one. Geocentrism says everything in the universe is going to move in relation to the Earth because the Earth is in the center of the entire universe. So no matter how good of a telescope you get, right, you're just going to see the further you look out in space that we're in the center. Geocentrism said that's not the case. You're going to see things all over the place because no one cared. The Earth is insignificant. It's random. It's not a special place. What did we see? Everything in the universe moves in relation to the Earth. No matter how deep and far out into space you look, everything moves in relation to the Earth to make it look as if it's in the center of the universe. That matches the geocentric prediction and directly falsifies the heliocentric prediction, right? At the time. So once again, we see another thing. What do we do whenever we have a theory? We do a test and the evidence directly refutes our theory. I know it was a lot, so you can go. All right. We're going to move to Q&A in five minutes, but go ahead and respond to that for now. All right. Um, I don't know how you know it's default to position. I wish we went into that more. So to me, default to, to position about claims should be, I don't know what the answer is, but you keep making claims about what default position is. It doesn't seem like we're going to have any time to get into that with Q&A, um, Hubble telescope. So we look out into the sky, stars, it looks like we don't see an end. To me, means we don't know what the boundaries are if we don't see the end. The the response should be, I don't know if there is an end. So it means we don't know how big it is. The response should be, I don't know if we are the center or not. That would be based on philosophical claim. I don't know if we are in the center, it's the same response. Singularity, um, I don't believe um, in a singularity. I don't know what the proper cosmological model is because something like um, um, Stephen Hawking with the, uh, was he the, the. Why are you just ignoring my question, bro? I'm, I'm responding to your three claims. What was your question specifically? Because you said a lot. It's like five minutes yeah, of shit. Fair enough. But yeah, because I had to just recap it because it's just so hard to get to a point in this style of debate. For then some just reason. ask a question. And the question is simple. Okay. I, I laid out what happened, what was predicted and what we saw. And the question was, when we have a theory and it makes a specific prediction, then we do a test and it oh, yeah. directly goes against or refutes that theory. What do you do with your theory? I said specifically, if we can't see, if we see stars way out we don't know where the edge is you do, the answer is i don't know how big it is that's not the point you would dude you the point is that the evidence directly matches the geocentric model over and over and over and what happens is the other model just constantly updates to say oh well actually what our model predicts is everything the geocentric model predicts and they, they had to keep on changing it to say that so oh the the measurement of the orbit didn't work well don't worry that's an illusion Actually, you, I, you think you're moving in a curved path around the sun, but actually you're free falling in a straight path. Time slows down and everything contracts when you try to measure things. You just can't tell. So it's going to make it look like the earth is stationary and in the center, but it's just an illusion. And then whenever we look out in deep space, it's going to look like the earth's in the center, no matter how far we look at all the distant galaxies. But that's just an illusion, actually. Everything's accelerating and expanding away from everywhere at the same time. There is no center. And it just creates the illusion that the earth is in the center of the universe. Do you see the reoccurring theme here? And that's a limit of our ability to see out into deep space. That doesn't mean that it extends forever. That doesn't mean it doesn't extend forever. Maybe the universe is infinite in size. I don't believe that's the case. Maybe the cosmos is infinite in size if there's multiple universes. I don't know. I don't have about. the answer. I don't have the answer. I'm not an empiricist. I am a naturalist. Um, I, I am a rationalist. So I, I, I don't accept those type of claims as true. I don't believe... In the um, singularity, um, that is a mathematical artifact, anyways. So I, I don't, I don't have the answer. So I don't know if the Earth is the center of existence. I, I 
to say it is would be a fallacious argument because you the don't evidence know shows it. that it that we are in the center of the entire observable universe. All no, it doesn't. Obs yes, it does. All astronomical no. observation. Name. Yes, it does because the you don't know how far it is. You see, you look at observable. Okay, one second, there, Zine. He was just about you, to ask you a question. Can't, you can't respond. see the end. I said Can observable, you? observable universe and again last time i'm going to try to explain this though it's not just about oh we can only see so far in each direction so it makes us look like we're in the center that's not what it's about it's about the fact that distant galaxies and their recessional velocities move in a specific way in fact they complete circuits annually everything even in deep space moves in relation to the earth and you have red shifts okay and all of it is in relation to where the earth is that's why they had to change the model to say Oh, the universe is accelerating and expanding in all directions, and it creates the illusion that the Earth is in the center. It is about redshift and blue shift and the motion of galaxies. It isn't about we can only see so far in each direction. All right, over to you, Ozean. We're running out of time. No, we don't know how large the universe is, so you can only see so far. That is crazy, bro. All right. With that, I think we should move into our Q&A. And uh, we did a poll earlier, and I closed it out. We had 785 votes. So I'd like to get 785 votes on our current poll so we can get a gauge of uh, how many people are, are tuning in that have a different opinion. Maybe some of you have changed your mind listening to the exchange. Uh, make sure if you have the time to check out that poll uh, that I'll try to close out at that point uh, when you vote in that, that you hit the like button as well. So let's move into to the super right, chats can, and thanks everybody can i fix a can i fix a coffee really fast it oh, takes like yeah. it's one minute one minute yeah yeah sure okay. thing it'll take a little bit it'll take like three minutes no you're fine i was gonna say actually this is a good opportunity uh i usually do a little uh you know moment if anybody wants to have a uh, a break so ozzy and if you need to step out and you know grab yourself a drink or no, uh, use the washroom that's fine all right well we'll take a moment then and uh, we'll wait for witset uh to grab a coffee to keep himself uh, rolling on but thanks everybody for the super chats we are going to get into it shortly uh it seems like a lot of people have enjoyed the discussion back and forth so i'm just checking out our live chat make sure you guys are behaving yourselves there were a lot of votes and there's a lot of people hanging out i see thousand people about hanging out so uh yeah we appreciate all the support and everybody who's taken the time to hit the like button because you're boosting up our stream and the algorithm right now and i will remind you guys if you're listening on our podcast forum and you want to participate uh in the action live like we are right now uh you're going to want to subscribe to our youtube channel modern day debate uh and uh of course listening on the podcasts is a uh, is a great way to save data but uh yeah if you want to interact with our speakers uh, this is the best way to do it. So uh, make sure you subscribe to Modern Day Debate on YouTube. Uh, I'll just uh, try to check out this live chat. Ryan, you were very fair today. Thank you. Well, thank you, Herbert. Uh, Hubert Rios. Uh, appreciate that. Rio. Uh, let's see. Everybody hit the like button, says Batman. Thank you. And thank you to all the mods in our live chat. We appreciate you guys hanging out, uh, making sure that things are kept civil and that, uh, you know, when people uh, check this out post, uh, post debate, that they're not, uh, you know, subjected to some really vitriolic stuff that you might <laughs> see in the YouTube live chat. We've, uh, we've seen a few things. Ryan is 100% Canadian. Yeah, born, raised. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to escape me. Uh, I get in trouble every once in a while. People will be in the comment section after these debates saying, Ryan chit-chatted too much about how he's Canadian. Well, eh, you know, there's a lot of people who aren't Canadian on here, and I always like to poke around and see who we're interacting with uh, all over the world, and uh, maybe this could be an, a good opportunity. Ozian, you moved recently, I think, uh, or I, maybe you just, I think you said you recently updated that you'd moved, but uh, you want to tell everybody where you're at and how you're doing? I just uh, moved to a smaller home because my kids are all moved out and have their own places now. So I don't need a huge giant house anymore. Oh, that's so, good. Downsized. <laughs> well, that's good. I was going to say, I, I wish I had a big giant house. I just have a little mini home here, but uh, yeah, it's enough to get me by. I got uh, a little corner over here for all my instruments and uh, that keeps me busy. So, uh, yeah, thanks again, everybody. Uh, it, like I said, it seems like it's been a really uh, civil live chat majoritively. And uh, once again, no short thanks to our mods for 
uh, doing what they do. So make sure you hit the like button if you want to catch these debates live, and uh, hit the bell button and the subscribe. And we will be right back with you guys shortly. We're just waiting for Witset. Uh, I don't want to go to my cut screen. So. I'm sure we'll get a lot of flat earth questions. <laughs> no worries. I'll answer them. Oh, no. You have your own hat? He has glasses and you have a hat? This is going to be a nightmare, everybody. <laughs> oh, I'll no. answer. Uh, why, are you the... my, why, are you, why are you biting my gig, bro? No, no. He has a hat. He said he could answer the flat earth questions. And I said, wait, hold on. You have a hat and he's got glasses. We're going to be in yeah, some he's trouble. Bite, he's biting my gig. <laughs> Oh, we'd love it though, honestly. I wanted to debate NASA with the moon landing stuff, but we can get there. That's definitely something that could be on the table. If it's I pretty fascinating how little people know about this subject. It's kind of crazy. I watched all your videos on it. And why don't you understand it, bro? I do. Dude, Ozine, when people say, oh, of course it looks like we're in the center because we can only see so far and we're looking at it from the earth, that is irrelevant. We're talking about how you have to believe the universe is accelerating and expanding in all directions to create the illusion we're in the center based on redshift. So that's totally believe, different. I have to believe redshift means it's expanding or accelerating. So to, you do to, if you uh, want to believe that the Earth is not in the center of the universe. All right. I'll that's... have to accept the concept of expansion or de or not. Like I could believe a cease is correct. Re what? Relational. I can believe mocking and concepts are correct. I would mean not accept the, the idea. Well, I'm glad you guys are excited to uh, get back into it, uh, and uh, ho hopefully you got everything you need there, Austin, to uh, keep whirling through the uh, Super Chats, because there's going to be a lot of them, I think, here. We'll try to keep it tame. LJ asks, oh, your first one's a little bit too pointy there, LJ, but I appreciate you. You can ask it. Uh, okay. He says, a man with a big stomach is a man with a small mind. I don't know what yeah. that means. Well, I have a big head, so it, my brain may be stupid, but it is quite large so I, I don't know how he quantifies that but let's carry on lj uh once again says why space travel keeps getting delayed for decades now it's asking you ozian you know we just landed on the moon a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago now like private company just did actually but they were funded by are you proud NASA? of that are you proud of what they they said it fell over and they gave you it no fell pictures. over i know it's so sucks so this just proves like what was it only like five no four of nine or is it three of nine of the last missions to the moon were successful with like robots but humans were like successful all but one time was apollo 13 they had to come back because yeah, it totally uh, checks out Ozian. but humans can land on the moon because human pilots navy pilots especially are much better than those stupid robots you know, okay so. all right let's carry on see if we can get some more meat here and uh thank you lj for all your super chats i i did see earlier that you put quite a few in there and i'm gonna try to uh get to them as long as my scroller works uh lj asks us again at what height does the vacuum of space start um it depends what you mean by vacuum just low pressure system i mean we consider space to be the carbon line i think it's what 100 kilometers any thoughts over there austin um no i don't i don't know what space is and i don't make claims about what i can't independently verify but i, I mean probably pretty high up as in a, you know maybe a, maybe a few hundred miles or something i have no idea and go there all right let's carry on matt hightower says for 15 how do you explain comets they come and go in a predictable way what are they and where did they come from why does their trajectory, typically predictable, revolve around the sun and not the Earth? So how do what, you what, explain comets? What? Comets? Comets, yes. Yeah. First of all, they don't... You notice he said typically do something in relation to the sun and not the Earth. That's funny. But uh, they don't always do anything. Um, but they look electrical in nature. And if they were to move in relation to the sun, which is clearly electrical in nature as well... Um, then yeah, sure, it can move in relation to that system. Why would it not be able to? Why why would if something's moving in relation to the sun, why would that in any way somehow falsify the fact we prove the Earth is stationary and in the center of the universe? So why do they do that? Because that's that's 
what they do. I don't know exactly even what they are. They look electrical and they move in relation to the sun sometimes. And uh, yeah, we have sporadic meteor showers and we also have reoccurring things such as comets and, and they're all very cyclical and seemingly electric. Go ahead and respond if you'd like there, Ozian. Well, just to steel man, like the Tycho Brahe model, they believe it's explained um, by that model that it's even though it, it looks like it's orbiting the sun, it's actually still orbiting the everything is still orbiting the earth is just like anyways also That's going the, uh, around the sun the neo tyconic model claims that neo- everything is moving around the sun while it moves around the earth yes. you don't have to believe that just one of many different possibilities just explain it um so there's there's explanations under these other cosmological models that like a cease explains in his relational mechanics and stuff like that that I don't accept is true. I wish I'd gone more into that. I, I made a bunch of clips of, from Assis's book um, that he talks about um, Cavendish and stuff like that, but we need to get into that, unfortunately. Um, but I don't believe that's true. I do believe that um, like general relativity is true, or is not true necessarily, but um, it explains our observations pretty well. All right, close us out on this one, Austin. Uh, yeah, there's a kinematic equivalence within your own paradigm. So things can be moving in relation to the sun. neo tyconic system is one of many things. And nothing that we see in the sky, whether that be parallax, aberration, moving of the stars, planets, comets, meteors, none of those are exclusive to anything. The Earth can be in the center and explain all of those. And in fact, that's how we observe them. All right. Thank you so much to both of our speakers for answering those questions and uh, expounding on that. Uh, let's carry on. LJ asks to Ozian, the fastest bullets fastest bullets travel 2,000 miles per hour. Rockets travel 17,500 miles per hour to leave Earth. How can humans and the ships remain safe going eight times the speed of flying bullets? Um, planes can... So I worked on jets that could go like Mach, I don't know, 5 or something like that. Um, it So what hurts you is the acceleration. Um, not the top speed. So they just have to accelerate under so many G-force and they make um, suits um, for like the pilots, at least on the jets and oxygen masks that forces air. And then they make these bladders. I wish I, now you can see my belly and see how fat I am. So they make these suits that compress their bellies to keep the oxygen from going in their gut and keeps their lungs from collapsing from the g-forces onto their chest to keep them from passing out and something else i wasn't uh i think they called them ames i um, in the navy but the rate that worked on that type of stuff on the, the aircraft i was in avionics um at but um so i worked on different stuff on the aircraft but they made suits to prevent them from passing out when especially the like when they turn really fast they actually um, experience higher G's because they, they accelerate really quick. Anyways, that's what. All right. Did you have any thoughts there, Austin? You want to move on? I'm good. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh, let's scroll back on up. And thank you so much for your super chat. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you keeping the conversation rolling along. So uh, Joshua Jamie says, how can you say we are in the center of the universe if we haven't mapped the entire universe? Over to you, Austin. I said it like five times, man. We are in the center of the observable universe, meaning based on everything that we can observe and know to exist and verify, and including every time we get better and better technology to see further and further out into space. It's the same thing every time the Earth appears to be in the center of the universe. And the current model says... Well, yeah, we're going to appear to be in the center of the universe because everything is expanding away from each other. There is no center. Everywhere looks like it's the center, and you'd never be able to tell the difference. It's just an illusion. So, again, I, you, this is a semantic, weird argument to be like, well, what if, how do you know how big the universe is to know it's in the center? I said the center of the observable universe, everything that's actually known to exist, that is perceived, that is observed. And every time we look further and further and further, keep seeing that we are in the center. And that's because we are, and that's how it works. That's why it's what we observe. Any other 
any thoughts over there, Ozzy, and uh, before we move on? Yeah, so optics, like we can't read the, I can't remember what it was. You actually discussed it in your last debate with, about this. I can't remember what it is, but it, we can only uh, resolve things that are so tall depending on the optics of the device that are seen and the distance of the um, object away. Um, so anyway, so we can only see so far with our current technology. James Webb Telescope is getting pretty good. But what does that even have to do with that? We can only see so far. All right, closing thoughts for you, Austin. Again, that doesn't have anything to do with it. It isn't about that we can only see so far in each direction, right? It's about why does everything move in relation to the Earth? That has nothing to do with how far you can see. It's that everything moves in relation to the Earth as if it was in the center. That's why they came up with the idea of redshift being expansion creating the illusion that we are in the center why do you think they're expanding away from us i don't believe that they're expanding away that's a belief system that doesn't work there are way too many redshift anomalies it's already been disproven all right so then why did you assert it that's what your belief claims all right let's no, move it's on. not i never asserted it last thoughts okay to austin there so let's move on there fellas uh so sorry uh We'll try to see if we got some more here for you, Ozian, as we go through. But uh, we need about 160 more votes before we'll be uh, at the vote count of our first poll, and then we'll get an accurate result for uh, how our audience has uh, shifted throughout the course of our discussion here. So LJ asks, fun question, what would change your mind to go to the other side? Let's start with you, Ozian, on this one. Change my mind? Um... I'd have to be shown that something supernatural exists. What? Are you serious? Have, you, you'd have yeah. to be shown that something supernatural exists to accept the evidence that the Earth is in the center? Yes. That's pretty crazy. Of course, the, the logical way to do it would be just look at the evidence, figure out what's really going on, and if the Earth is in the center, then yeah, it has implications such as probably what an intelligent agency but my answer to the question and the question was what would need to happen for us to change our mind right my my answer is um all of the stuff that's directly refuted the claim that the earth orbits would have to be sufficiently explained and demonstrated with tests and measurements etc like the uh interferometry detecting sidereal rotation and changing with altitude and changing with the periodicity of the sun and the moon Right, even po even the pendulum being affected, what happens in the sky, showing a translation of motion, showing that we can't detect the orbit of the Earth, and, and many other things. Right, um, the redshift anomalies, the Hubble tension problem, the cosmological constant problem, the dark matter problem, the flatness problem, the horizon problem. All of these are major problems that are paradoxical and completely disastrous for current cosmology. With the accepting that the Earth is in the center of the universe, like all astronomical observations ever have literally shown us, we don't have any of those problems. We don't have those cosmological problems. So you would have to fix all those problems, verify some type of claim of gravity, explain away all the anomalies, and then actually address the physical measurements that refuted the claim. Yeah, my worldview doesn't have any of those problems. So all right, that's cool. All right, what? let's carry on there, fellas. These Thank questions you. are from LJ, and uh, they're mostly pointed towards you, uh, Ozian. So LJ says, okay. again, share your screen with real non-CGI footage of space. It's to you, Ozian. Okay. Um... Oh, just share. your screen. Okay. Non-CGI footage. Here, the flag on the moon. Any input there, Austin? Obviously, I don't. I think it's embarrassing to like confidently assert that the Apollo missions were true. I think it's utterly embarrassing, and no disrespect. I, I, I just. Why? That's one of those, Sorry. I don't debate that. Just like I don't debate nine eleven, right? Like if people think the official story of nine eleven was true, don't know about the dancing Israelis. You know, it's cool, man. I don't. I don't. There are some things I just don't even. Oops. Here, I, I CGI'd that one. I added stars and holes in the flag and and a Satan symbol. It looks more like what maybe you would see if, if you could go land on 
a light. Okay. Do you guys want to move on, or do you have any uh, other thoughts yeah. there? Was he going to close this Yeah, section? no, it's all CGI. It, oh, like, that's good. We've got them faking it. It's not no big deal. Don't make it weird. We need to have that debate then. <laughs> Don't See, make you're, it you're weird. Making I don't claims. want to debate the moon landing. I'll debate that they fake space. I'll, de I'll, I'll debate you. I want to see you defend the stuff I've caught NASA doing or defend the, uh, I just had conversations with a couple astronauts and their answers are ridiculous and contradict each other and physically impossible. All right. So, Q Howard's coming we got in. We got another question. Let's carry on, fellas. I'm yeah. so sorry. Witsit, why stationary plane over neo Tyconic model? Oh, yeah. Um, because, like I said, I just accept the evidence for what it is, right? So... The Earth is clearly stationary. We were misled about that. And uh, if you go read all the intellectual giants, they'll tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a philosophical decision. We can't prove it. In fact, all evidence makes it look like we're in the center. But then we go tell a five-year-old, or if I allow my daughter to go to public school, which she would have to tell me, they're going to tell her that it's a fact and mislead her. Um, and, but anyway, so that's the one. So stationary. And your question is, well, why a stationary plane and not neo tyconic system well first of all a neo tyconic system it uses all the assumptions of the distances to the planets and the sun and the vacuum of space and the masses and all this stuff all this stuff that in fact just can be falsified much less verified um i don't make any of those claims and then the physical like the physical measurements of the surface of the earth falsify that it's curving right like the apparent displacement of the horizon long line of sight long distance microwave and radio wave transmissions spec specular reflections long distance observations of silhouettes it goes on and on and on um and uh you know like air force pilots observing k2 mountains 300 miles away at 28,000 feet altitude and it being completely level with them when it should be five degrees below five degrees below their horizontal i mean i just accept the evidence for what it is it includes that the earth's not curving even though that's not what this is about <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts on the other side before we move on? I think we should talk about the reasons for these beliefs more so than actually what the sh you believe the shape of the earth is. Oh, that could be also an interesting debate, uh, but it seems kind of meta. So let's carry on from here and uh, we'll talk about that some other time. Toby Walker asks, what's it? If you haven't already, can you explain Halton's ARP observations of redshift and what they indicate about the motion of the universe? Uh, yeah, Halton ARP pointed out all kinds of problems with redshift. We can just use uh, the example of basically in really layman terms, like the stuff that's closer to Earth has less redshift than the stuff that's further away. And he points this out with all kinds of... Uh, astronomical observations Paul Tenorp, you should definitely check them out but he points out that um like the, the redshift distribution is uneven if the idea is that everything's expanding away from each other everywhere it should be an even distribution he points out that um certain stars that are way closer than allegedly much more distant stars have more redshift or same with certain types of galaxies certain nebulas certain um like clusters of galaxies and everything like that so uh the redshift doesn't work it does it doesn't match the claim that every it's because everything is moving away from us. Uh, and what it means is that since not everything is not moving away from us, uh, that the earth has to be in the stationary. One of the big ones also is quasar redshift being grossly wrong from what it's supposed to be. But yeah, anyway, Halt and Arp, check it out. He also wrote seeing red as a follow up as he was ignored, even though he was previously adored. All right. <laughs> let's carry on then um let's see here i was just having some fun somebody said that ringo was a, a bad drummer and i was just uh, uh telling them they better step back get back get back to where you once belong anyways I, ringo? I, 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 <laughs> ringo star i was uh, i like old music i can't help it oh uh, that's fine oh. so uh let's carry on uh, thanks everybody for uh, your super chat, Q Howard. Uh, it's your first super chat. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, so welcome to Modern Day Debate and uh, asking questions to our speakers. This is what it's all about. Toby Walker asks, oh, what's it? If you haven't already, can you explain oh, uh, Halton's observations of redshift and what they indicate about the motion of the universe? Yeah, that the, earth's not, the universe is not moving. Well, it is. It's moving around us, not outside, not accelerating away from us. But you just asked that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Sorry. I just, I just wanted, to, I just wanted to make I, sure we all were on the same page there. Yeah, as I was reading through, I was just like, hold on, hold on. Some of these, 
some of these questions are very similar, so I do have to try to uh, like sift through them to make sure we're not asking the same ones. Siggy Sigwald, someone please let Wits know that A, we're not moving, and B, the universe is not the same as the observable universe. Hail Sagan. Okay. Um, I don't even know what that... Well, okay. Cool story, bro. All observations show that the Earth's in the center, uh, and people deny it because it, it has philosophical implications like that there may be moral accountability maybe this place was created maybe it requires intelligent agency because if the earth is in the center of the entire universe like well how to get there but uh yeah it is what it is i didn't say it was the same thing i just think it's a it's a bad faith dishonest tactic to be like how do you know how big the universe is when that's not the point that all actual evidence ever observed shows the earth's in the center and to respond with but maybe there's more stuff outside of there where things suddenly change and are different it's just weird and like it, it desperate so we should accept the truth for what it is you're in the center they lied to you they misled you as if it was scientifically proven that we're not and that is untrue and either way whatever you believe you should accept the truth being that we were misled about it well a lot of people believe the reason why they appeal to the big bang cosmology is to to appeal to a creator like to they used to believe like in science that it was a static eternal universe. Like if you read like, um, Oh, what's his name? Oh, doesn't matter. So there's like a lot of natural philosophy believed the universe was eternal and infinite and stuff like that. Um, like Einstein quotes, uh, Spinoza, that was it. Like the universe was eternal. And like, um, that those type of concepts were true. Like God was like the universe. Like those type of concepts were true. And that's why the like people say like the Catholic Church says, well, Big Bang cosmology is true. Redshift explains that. That's why people like Asi Andrew Andreas, he's he's an atheist. You appeal to his philosophy. He wants to go back to this concept that the universe is static, that is it's infinite, because he th he thinks um expansionary theory is a creationist story. Oh, like, cool. so I don't know why it you think it's not, but let's move that on. doesn't make it special. Um, since that one was technically uh, for you, Ozian, I got my notes figured out here now, so we uh, we shouldn't have any repeat questions. Uh, just trying to make sure I delete them as I go. Hango mm -hmm. Flamio says, Ozian, how do we know about unperceivable objects? Um, we can infer them from other observations. All right. Did you want to end there, or any thoughts on the um, other side? like pain so we we pain is not something we can observe directly but we can infer it from testimonial evidence where people testify to experiencing pain uh, moral intuitions and stuff we can infer that moral intuition exists due to like surveys and stuff like that that these type of concepts exist um to that so um Oh, same thing with space-time. So space-time is a concept that Einstein talked about. And then the Eddington experiment in um, 1990 um, sort of confirmed that observation through the lensing around the sun. So we can't observe space-time directly, but we can Ugh. measure such observations. So we can't necessarily say space-time itself exists, but we can say this concept, um, we predict these observations. So stuff like that. Um, we can infer from other things. Like so if you morality. make a prediction with your theory and then it matches it, it verifies it? Yeah, like morality, like moral intuition, right? Oh, wait, or don't change like the subject. Don't change the subject. So no, is the, is if the you hadn't have walked follow... away, if you hadn't walked away, I was talking about pain and morality. Then I spoke I'm about editing I'm asking you, is correct? the, in, is so the like, inverse... Did I change the topic or did you change the topic? I'm asking... I asked you a question because I had a follow-up, and the question is, is the inverse true? See, now it's lost in the ether because you just divert. So I was saying, so if you make predictions and then the evidence or observations match your prediction that verifies your theory, you said yes. I said, so is the inverse true? No. Oh, so when you when your theory makes predictions and the evidence goes directly against it, it doesn't falsify your theory so, and that's basically how it works. Oh, and let me say this real fast so people know. Yes, it does. That, that, that talking point about Eddington is literally untrue. When people say that Arthur Eddington experiment verified relativity, it literally didn't. 
there were like 34 plates and 32 of them didn't show anything. The two that supposedly did, did were damaged and can never be verified, required corrections. Eddington himself wrote and said, this is a major problem for relativity. And then no one else on the entire earth actually observed it. Eddington himself said, uh, this is a major problem for relativity. Now, pop PopSci articles tell you that it verified relativity. Okay. Just a reoccurring theme. We keep being misled here. 15 seconds uh, last Okay, then let me use the 15 seconds. Someone was saying that I'm lying about talking to astronauts or something, but I hear. <laughs> you jumped right says, on re that. Reach for the stars, Austin. Reach for the stars. All right. Uh, I do so apologize. that question was for me. Last Eddington and ahead, Dyson was, the experiment was repeated during the 1922 eclipse too. All right. We appreciate the enthusiasm there. And uh, hopefully everybody saw that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Monster asks with their membership chat. Thank you. A member for 26 months. That's awesome. Uh, can you even prove the universe has a center? This was asked earlier. So uh, we may have already gone over this one. But uh, if you have any other thoughts as we went through the other uh, super chats, uh, feel free to get it out, uh, Austin or Ozian. Oh. It's pretty simple. All astronomical observations show the Earth in the center. That's what we see. That's what we observe. That's the default position. It's something that can't be disproven, according to even Hubble and Einstein and Hawking. Hawking says you can never disprove that the Earth is in the center. That's exactly what it looks like. But I choose not to believe that on grounds of modesty. Okay? So if you're uncomfortable with accepting truth for what it is, that's okay. If you want to infinitely appeal to possibility so you can deny where you really live, that's okay. But I encourage you to accept the beautiful place that you live and what truth is. Truth is important. And when we're being misled about where we live, you should care about that, especially when children are as well. All right, let's just try to carry on from there. Bitter Truth asks, Mr. Whitsett, uh, actually, before I ask this, I'll just remind our audience, we're only 60 votes away from being back to 785 votes, and we'll close the poll and see where we're at for our votes uh, from the beginning, and uh, we'll reveal uh, how many of you voted yes and no from the beginning and at the end. Uh, make sure you're hitting the like button if you're going to vote in the poll, uh, because uh, once again, boosts us up in the algorithm, and we appreciate it. Bitter Truth says, Mr. Whitsett, where did you read that Earth in the center of the universe, Earth is in the center of the universe. Also, show me where did you read Earth is flat? I need evidence of both. Give me detail. Okay, uh, that might so, be a little bit loaded up there, but you can yeah. go ahead and break it down a bit. I'll try not to be too long here with that. I mean, but dude, we did we used interferometry to measure and test the claim that the Earth was moving, and it showed the Earth is not moving. Okay, and unlike what Ozian said or refused to answer, if the Earth is stationary, it's in the center of the universe. This is a well-known fact. And so if you want to be pedantic and be like, but we don't know what could be outside of it, just a weird appeal to possibility, like, okay, it's in the center of the universe that we observe, everything that we can see, okay? Everything moves around the Earth or in relation to the Earth. So Anyway, that's the answer. We uh, refuted the claim that the Earth is moving with highly precise interferometry measurements. In fact, we we detected the sidereal rotation and it changes with altitude, changes based on direction, changes with solar motion, what time of the year it is, where the sun and the moon are, etc. That's the easiest way to understand that. We falsified the claim the Earth is moving. And if the Earth is not moving, it's in the center. And that makes perfect sense because when we also look out into space, it shows that the Earth is in the center. When it comes to the flat... You can check my channel. We have all kinds of empirical measurements falsifying the radius value of the Earth, including line of sight, microwave and radio wave transmissions, specular reflections, long distance mirror flashes, uh, long distance observations that require like miles of Earth curvature blocking something, but it's not actually there. Again, the Air Force pilot Ten radar seconds. systems, et cetera. So uh, yeah, that's a whole rabbit hole, but we falsified the radius, falsified the claim that it's moving. That's the, that's the whole answer for both. All right, I'll give you a chance to respond to Rosian if you'd like. I don't think he's being honest about the foundations for his beliefs, why he believes the earth is the center. And I wasn't making any type of fallacious claim. You don't know how large the universe is to make the claim if we are the center of the universe is because you don't believe there's any mass. You don't believe it's actually a physical place. You believe that everything outside of the earth is fictitious. You believe that this is all that exists. You don't even know if there's anything outside of the boundary of the ice wall you think is there. 
it could be infinite flat plane eternally existing going but a weird straw man you bro. don't know but you don't know so you don't know if it's even but i don't there. think anything so is if there your foundation and it's if you're if if the foundation is a Bible, you should use that as a foundation. That's not for it. Your belief that it's a flat. That's not what it is at all, though. And it shouldn't I, be. I didn't even. The only reason I even reconsidered the scriptures is because I discovered the truth about the earth. It's so ridiculous to claim that's why I believe. I never said that there's nothing in space or that it's all fictional and doesn't exist and nothing exists outside of here. That's all obviously a straw man. I just don't believe the stories of men that have been disproven. And I encourage everyone to look at it, look at it with an open mind, diligently research, and you will find out the earth does not move in the center the of the universe. Is, the scriptures decri describe an earth you can walk around, like physically walk around. What are you? I don't I, I'm not gonna talk to talk to you about how you don't understand what the scriptures say or check the You don't understand them. Just, okay, what does that have to do with anything anyway? All right, this, it let's move it's on, not the guys. foundation for the belief. Let's move on. This is not what we're debating about, so let's just carry on. Uh, let's it see. Is. Thanks again, uh, everybody, for uh, your super chats. Tyler432 says, At Ozean, after all these years, not one real pick of Earth, Moon, and Sun from space. What is the excuse today for that? Earth, Moon, and Sun from space? Uh, we have several picks, so just because you deny their picks of those places doesn't mean they're not, so... Any thoughts on the other side there, Austin? No, he's he's right. Like, if you just go Google stuff from space, go Google Antarctica from space, we get a bunch of cartoons and CGI. Um, you know, any honest person would find that highly suspicious that you don't even have a real picture of Antarctica. So why would I believe CGI pictures of distant planets? Last thoughts there, Ozean, before we move on. Uh, we It depends how close the cameras are. It's resolution of the cameras. So it depends how close it is. You can get really... You get really close pictures. Like Mr. B says, really close pictures of Antarctica. You get really good detail with their cameras. Sophistry. Especially of the... That's not sophistry. Especially of a 24-hour sun if he's there on Antarctica. Like, red I herring. don't know what you mean. It's not red herring either. Uh, Those Ozean, are pictures I, of Antarctica. Listen, listen, listen. For you at home, you hear what he just tried to do is divert. Go Google. The question was for me. I didn't divert. If you want pictures of Antarctica with high detail, you need to be close. It depends on how far you are away from the observation, how detailed the camera is, which is how de much detail you can get of the object. That is Ryan, not. Can you, Ryan, can you give us just a second? Well, uh, of course, Ozzy, Ozzy, you guys have been question. allowed. Uh, There's you, some questions second, that Ryan. you get. Ozzy, Ozzy, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Ozzy, I'm not trying to one all. second, buddy. Just one second. I don't get to respond to questions that you get at all for some of them, Witsit. So don't go tell me I'm lying. Well, I have allowed I have allowed for some back and forth for some of the questions. And some uh, sometimes it's just, you know, one one and one, right? So uh, if we want to bounce this back and forth, I feel like that's fair. So go ahead, Austin. Let's uh, let, let's try to move yeah. it. I mean, let me just clarify what I'm saying here. Like, I think you know, but supposedly they show us all kinds of continents from space. You can go look at North America from space. You can go look at Africa from space. Supposedly, we see all kinds of land masses from space, okay? Now, go Google Antarctica from space and go to images, and you're going to see nothing but cartoons and blatantly CGI. Okay, last thoughts on the Ozean, and this will be well, the now, final thoughts on this one. No, now I got to see if I can find an actual picture of Antarctica from space, so I can share it. He says it's blatantly CGI. You want me to this share is... screen? No, it no. It's the questions for me. I can share a screen. Thank you very much. So or everyone I, at I home can go do it. This doesn't look like CGI to me. I I don't know. But you nope. think anything for space must be CGI? Hey, wait. You think that's a real picture? I don't know. It's the first one that pulled up. It looks like a real picture to me. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't even be claimed to be a real picture, but that doesn't look real at all to me. So, so here, let's see if we can find other picture. Here's another picture. That's clearly CGI. That's not even claimed to be real. See, it says a stock portal Getty images. They're all cartoons, man. You don't find that weird? Here, let's find a real photo from a. St oh, here's U U European Space Agency. It's not going to show the whole space. continent of Antarctica. Look, there you go. 
good. So you see part of it. Uh, that doesn't look point? real either. But like, if, even if it was, it's not the continent of Antarctica. This, so you're making my point, dude. If you Google it, if they're all well, this cartoons, is the first time I've looked. If I can, oh, that's find fine, one, brother. It's all good. I'm not trying to like owe you or something. I was just telling like the high res stock photos. Dude, These dude, are OZ, I was photos. just telling the people at home Here's they should check one. it out. That's a cartoon. That's your claim. You think that's a real picture? It says a satellite image stock photo. I don't know. Oh my gosh, no one thinks that's real, bro. I that's mean, your claim. Yeah, this is this is crazy. You hey, think everyone, all photos from space are fake? So no, I'm the saying point? these are these are blatantly cartoons and CGI. Here is Blatant, NASA. Blatantly. Antarctica land ice village. That is CGI. Change. That well, they're split. showing like the um, okay, so you can't find change. any real pictures of Antarctica from space. Well, gotcha. I only spend a minute looking, dude. Go, no we go up to the top question. and click on images. Go on to the top and click on images because that way Science we can see them all library. at once. Here we go. Ozean, Ozean, why don't you just click on images at the top? That way we can see all of them at Here's once. Here's NASA, NOAA, and our satellite image of the Earth set against a background of the stars. That, that's how Antarctic. you know that's not a real picture. You can't see the stars in any of the pictures they show us from space. On the surface seas and oceans blue. Here we go. Dude, this is embarrassing. That is clearly not real. It says the data from variety of combined uh, data that the creates an image. Go up to the top and press images, Ozean. Why won't you just oh, go to the top? Because I need to know what source it comes from. I oh, can't no, but just I'm just saying it's, just, it's going to make source. the point though, right? Like if... Like I need just, to know what source it comes from. All right, whatever, man. You're afraid to do it because then the audience will get to see all of them and that they're all cartoons. And that's why I you're need, not doing no, it. No, because I need to know what source it comes from, unlike you. Okay, then well, can we do photo. this on a different time because you don't have one? Or can You're I the one that rebutted the question. Ooh, this is embarrassing. Do you want me to share my screen and show the whole audience that they're all cartoons or you want to just move on? Well, you're just going to show a bunch of random pictures from a Google search and say, look, they're all cartoons. Well, if I say, if I find put a satellite, it, it, okay, I'll try put, to do a better search. Satellite if I really, photos. dude, can we move on? I, I think Actually, would, hey, you can. I think it would be a good idea to move on, but this would be a fun discussion to have some other time. Even a point of discussion about uh, Antarctica itself, since you guys, uh, you know, always seem to uh, want to talk about Antarctica, and uh, it's a it's a hot topic for you two. So well, why don't we reserve this discussion for Early another day? Earliest satellite photo images in Antarctica reveals. That's not a picture. Early, earliest satellite images of Antarctica reveal highs and lows for sea ice. Yeah, I, I actually think it's awesome that you're doing this. The audience can see all this, right? Because it says it's from the Nimbus yeah. satellites for revealing new information. Wow, yeah, man. For sure. You're, you're making my point for me by showing the audience. And that's all I was trying to say is, you know, if people just kind of believe we go to space all the time, you would think logically, well, yeah, of course we have pictures from Antarctica. We're in space. No, actually, go look it up. They're all cartoons. They're all CGI. It's ridiculous. And you'll notice that most of the people that believe in it are trying to make fun of well, you this for not is believing like, in it. I've this never is even looking, looked into it. This is looking for specific data, so it's not like doing a color okay. resolution. You don't, you don't have any real pictures of Antarctica from space. That's cool. All right, let's end the screen share. We're going to move on. Um, thank you so much. Let's see here. Thank you for that. All right, so uh, I just closed the poll. Uh, we were a little bit over uh, the vote count, but uh, we should still have a pretty accurate result. So the first poll, we had 785 votes. Uh, votes. Second one, we had 791 votes. Uh, so the question was, is the Earth the center of the universe? So for yes, on the first vote early in the debate, we had 47 voted yes. 43% voted no, and undecided people, 9%. Second poll we put up, we had 48% said yes, so we had an increase of 1%. We had 43% said no, so we had the same percent on no, and 7% voted on unsure. So that's a decrease to the unsure, and the yes increased by 1. So take that for what you will. Uh, this is a neutral platform, and we do these polls for the fun of it. So let's carry on, everybody. And uh, thank you, everybody, in our live chat who participated in our poll and uh, helped us get those results. We'll put up one more poll before the end, 
and uh, carry on with our super chats. So, Bitter Truth asks, what's it? What is expanding universe equation? Uh, I don't know. It's, I know it, I don't care what it is, right? You have the cosmological constant, which is supposedly the energy that causes the Hubble constant, and that's just fake news, right? Like, I don't see how me not knowing the equation off the top of my head somehow means that it is expanding. Uh, and then if Ozean looks it up right now and then pretends he knows it, it doesn't change anything either. So like accelerative expansion of the universe is a ridiculous claim. You need a lot of energy to try to even theoretically make that happen. It's called dark energy, right? The cosmological constant. And it's called the cosmological constant crisis because no one can come up with this energy. We saw vacuum energy on the earth, tried to assume it'd be in space. It was off by 10 to the 120th power. Wasn't even close. You have to claim that space is expanding four to eight times faster than the speed of light with an energy source that no one can define or find. It's nowhere to be seen, but it has to be there. It's just ridiculous. Oh, and then when you make your different forms of measurements of this assumed expansion, you have what's called the Hubble tension problem because the measurements don't match up. They don't even match up. They show that it would be expanding at different rates. It's called the Hubble tension problem. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a ridiculous claim. Any thoughts on the other side? Um, no, I didn't appeal to expansion. So, like, I just asked well, them But how the mainstream know. model does. Yeah, so, but that's science. So, I, I'm not appealing to science for my argument. I asked you what the center of the universe was. And um, you just said the, what we can observe. So, that's just appealing argument for ignorance. So, you're just saying, all we can observe is this. We don't know what's beyond that. So, how do you know what the center is? So... It could okay be here it, yeah, okay this know. is what it is it's it's v equals h times r v represents the galaxy's recessional velocity r its distance away from the earth and h is the constant of proportionality called hubble's constant so that's the part that i i didn't completely remember was like uh exactly what the the distance is but i guess it's obviously just the radius into in relation to whatever point it is i guess that you know you're supposed even though it's moving at a second you do the equation well yeah okay cool so there, I, I did not know that off the top of my head, and it doesn't even change anything. Me either. All right, it's weird. It though. I would have looked it up if I wanted to. I did. I'm curious. It was like a gotcha, you know. Oh, oh, never mind. Magic, magic I, energy is making you, the universe expand. Did you see my debate with Caleb? I tried to save him. They asked him like the first derivative of three um, x squared is. I said, "Don't answer that, dude. It's, it's a calculus question." He answered eighty one. It's like. Wow. You know it's you know it's pretty bad when people are like so thirsty right now to get a gotcha on me that now they're all talking about how stupid I am because I didn't know an equation off the top of my head. It's pretty bad. Sure. Pretty I'm bad. Phys- you guys, I'm not a cosmologist or a physicist. Like I have a business degree. I I went to law school. I went to graduate school for history. Like, come on, like. The, the people like, like, yeah, I got him. Told you. I told you he was you, stupid. Do you want to do a debate on flat earth? I'm like, I wrote a book on philosophy of naturalism and shit. Like, All do right. you want to do a video on flat earth? Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll move into that sometime. Uh, you know, there's definitely, uh, I think, opportunity for that down the road. Uh, but let's carry on. I opened up a new poll. It's just a fun poll on whether you hit the like button. Uh, if we can pass 500 likes for the stream, then I'll open up uh, who's your preferential speaker for this debate. We'll open a caddy one, okay? And, you know, have a have a bad one. Let's see here. Next question. Joshua Jamie says, why are you assuming the Earth is not moving and it must be the center of the universe? And saying I don't know where the center is doesn't mean I don't think there is one. You well, asking me? I think that's me because I'm the one that said I don't know. But he's directing it at me. He's defending you, saying, uh, saying, saying one thing doesn't mean the other. Well, you did say right that there wasn't a center, right? Yeah, I said I don't know what the center is. Or you said that even saying the universe has a center is probably incoherent unless you can measure the universe. Yeah. Yeah. But his question is asking me why do I think the Earth is stationary? Well, first of all, let's just use our brains for a second. That is the default. We don't feel it. We see everything in the sky move. We see sidereal rotation. The stars move. We see the sun move. We see a cycle about that. We look out into space. We see everything moving in relation to the earth. So that's the default. 
Okay, but you could say, well, the earth is so big, it moves at such a rate that you wouldn't feel it. It would make the sky look like it's moving. We all know that, okay? But the point is that it's the default. Then we take interferometry measurements that directly falsify the claim that the earth is orbiting. In fact, it does have a fringe shift that is consistent and it changes with altitude, time of the year, et cetera. Even Einstein said, if that's not instrumental error, everything is everything's wrong. We, everything's refuted. Well, it's been verified in modern times, even with radio wave, mill, millimeter wave propagation tests, many different tests. Um, so yeah, we falsify that the earth, the claim that the earth is moving, even though the, the default is that it's stationary. So why do I think that? Because that's just objectively what it is and it's been proven. And what that means is that the earth is in the center of right. the cosmos. Um, and so, yeah, I agree that you may not know where the center is or if there is a center in your paradigm, but that's because you made up a story. You made up a story to explain away the evidence, but All right. I encourage you to reconsider, man. It's going to be okay if you're special. It's not going to be that that bad. All right. Let's give Fozian a chance to respond if he has anything to say, and we'll uh, let you close out. Yeah. Um the blue marble picture shows the Antarctica. Not all of it, of course, as you, as you know. But anyways, um, I think we can Maybe be special. Maybe not real. I think we can be special without presuming a physical locale of central. Um, even if you believe in God, I don't think God, uh, God belief requires that there be a center sure. of reality. So um, I believe the cent uh, specialness can come from our familiar relationships, our culture, our identity, and stuff like that. Let's carry on there. Not everybody has to hear my... All right. Even though I can do it with my mouth. Oh, Toby Walker says, Ozian, how does nothing expand into something without violating the first law of thermodynamics? Will you take your time kind of answering that? I'll be right back. Sure thing. Damn it. I was just going to say, raw man argument. So that's a philosophical question. I will take time to uh, explain that. So the question really is, why does something exist? rather than nothing so that's really a philosophical question so right now there's a form of something that exists so because there's a form that something exists now there must have been a potential for this form of something existing right now so the potential for this form of something existing meant there was a pre there was a potential for it to exist previously so why does something exist at all it means there is a potential for us existing to exist. Now, all examples of causation I have ever experienced in all of my life, 51 years of living on this beautiful, wonderful planet of existence that we all live on, all of us, all of us humans that live on, has been natural. As far as we know, they've all been physical. It seems like, as far as we know, that intentionality arises from brains all brains have correl all minds have correlations all intentionality have correlations to brains physical brains natural things so it doesn't look like existence has to have intentionality behind um existing so it seems like the the fact we exist doesn't require intentionality so my belief, the reason why anything exists at all is because something previously existed. The potentiality for anything existing at all existed. So does that mean is there a turtle all the way back? Maybe. Does it mean there does it mean there was some eternal thing that a causally caused this thing that we all experience to exist exist? Maybe. So you could say, well, infinite causal chain of things is a sort of an incoherent concept. Well, that could be true, but I could believe in like a tenseless cause, a uh, tenseless theory of time, which means um, no moment in time has any um, preference, like past, present, future, all, um, all have ontological equal claims. Like there's no uh special preference on today tomorrow or the future so in, in that concept of time the whole set of past forms of existence caused today to happen 
We have another question for you, though. Uh, there, Ozzy, and, and we'll just carry okay. on uh, while Witsit has a, uh, a little reprieve there. Siggy Sigwald well, I hope for, they answered. Uh, 666 uh, says, hey, and he's, he's triggered me again. It's the Iron Maiden, right? You know, instantly I'm like, oh, I got to listen to that song. Hail Sagan. He's going to say, you know, he will. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's a great album. Someone please tell Witsit we don't praise Newton or Cut. Kepler for their beliefs, but for what they got right, also feels a bit dishonest to expect for people to get 100% things right we yet haven't discovered. Hail Sagan. So uh, we'll let you respond to some of that there, Ozian, if you got thoughts. Newton and Kepler were geniuses, like especially for his work in calculus for Newton. Um, for his work in understanding like laws of motion. I do not understand Newtonian physics. Like I understand like the general concepts of laws of motion, the general concepts of the laws of planetary motions, but the physics that ground it has any, have you opened, what's it? Have you opened up like Newtonian physics, like the actual books? Like they're like, it's like hundreds of pages, like all the different principles that he, yeah. Like, you're right. Like, I, the math involved, like, like, I don't know. Like, it's people like say, like, um, Einsteinian physics are complicated. I couldn't get to, through Newtonian physics. Like, I would need to go to, but why would I learn Newtonian physics when the current paradigm is Einsteinian physics? Like, you know, I was just saying. Yeah, the craziest I, part about all that, though, is that, um, you can actually derive Kepler's laws from newton well yeah which is so you can do it in reverse which uh is a kinematic derivation and shows that all they did was look at the periodicity of everything like the cycles it has mm -hmm. and then reverse engineered it um which is pretty telling and then this is the part i i have not i'm gonna clean out i never read like the entire principia or anything like that but newton point blank says like um you know the earth could be in the center if there was a force uh akin to gravitation that was the equal and opposite reaction um and then he goes on that's the final thing he writes in his whole principia so he writes right. all this stuff and then he says well the earth could be in the center and then he writes subsequent things that say stuff like well uh i can't even understand gravity right like that would be insane if that actually exists and it'd have to be a direct act of god and there would have to be some type of medium that everything is in because mm -hmm. everything like for it to be instant because he doesn't have a time variable in his yeah. equation right and there would have to be a medium touching both the bodies at the same time for there to be that. Uh, then he talks about an ether and how if it was like really dense, like liquid silver, but with no viscosity, then maybe things can move perpetually for 10,000 years and all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, Newton is kind of misunderstood. He was really big into alchemy, really big into God, really big into metaphysics, and wasn't even like claiming he knew that the Earth moved around the sun or anything. Like he said, the Earth could be in the center. So, Can you agree uh, he was a genius? Yeah, yeah. If, if if the story of Newton is true, he was a genius. He he, he discovered you, Newtonian gravity and calculus. He, he created calculus. I know. By well, 22. he it they like calculus was created by two people concurrently. Like there was a big fight, like between two people who created it first. It's really yeah, I'm suspi I'm suspicious of the story. The right. other guy. Yeah, Let, yeah. Let's carry on. We got lots of super chats, and uh, I will apologize in advance. Uh, I can hear it outside right now. There is a vicious rainstorm pounding on my roof. So if we cut out for any reason, I'm going to apologize in advance because uh, it is just pounding uh, on my roof right now, and I'm a little concerned. Matt Hightower says, uh, please, for once, tell me what flat earthers think they are seeing in the night sky. What are all those lights? Please offer a detailed explanation as to what we are seeing. It would be sonoluminescence. It could literally just be vibratory displacement inside a fluid medium that would create what we see. Uh, and then everything's expected to look kind of spherical because if I have a source of light and it has a radius of light, right, how far it can go in all directions, and it'll look like a sphere. Just like you can look down a, a railroad track to a train with rectangular head headlights, and it'll look like the light is a circle. Right? That's just how light works. Um, but yeah, it could literally just be vi vibration, some type of vibration. And what it is that's vibrating, I don't know. And and it would be ignorant to make up stories and spend all kinds of time and energy and money in, in like coming up with different aspects of that story if it's just baselessly made up. 
I think that that's the craziest part of the whole thing is that people have been told so many claims about space, even though it's constantly changing, it's made up, it gets falsified. They feel like they need a replacement for it. Um, and I, you know, anyway, so yeah, I, I, what I think is it's in the torus field. The redshift is because there's electromagnetic retardation, meaning that there's actually a shift that happens because there's a centrifugal divergent motion right out from the center around that's expected to see some type of redshift everything's intrinsically electromagnetic galaxies look just like the center of magnetic fields with the spiral so yeah everything's electromagnetic seems like there's a fluid medium things are much more local much closer and maybe sun luminescence is the cause of the stars but everything is for sure electric the current model is a complete joke let's give you another one there Witsit, where uh ozine had to where you're gone Witsit. What did Edwin Hubble change about astronomy? And feel free to uh, respond after Ocean. Uh Yeah, so he he's the one that he introduced expansion, which is kind of what I was trying to get into earlier, which was that we ended up getting these telescopes that were much more advanced. And everyone was kind of theorizing about what was going on. But at the time, everyone thought that there was like a singularity. Everything expanded from there, which how does everything expand including space from a singularity what's it expanding into if there is no space or space is the antecedent of expanding but anyway they they thought that when we we get these really big telescopes and we look out there i showed a picture of it in my presentation then we're gonna see everything moving in different directions because there was a singularity way over there and we're tucked away in a corner way over here so it should just show that we're in, insignificant like we're swimming in a sea of stuff that doesn't care about us but what they did when they looked out further is they saw that actually everything's moving in relation to us, right? And predominantly the recessional uh, velocities are being proportionate to their distance from the earth. And that's not what was expected. So what he did was say, okay, well, to explain this, you say that the redshift is actually velocity shifts, that the, that there's actually kind of like a Doppler effect that the uh, that space is expanding out from us. And so he's the one that introduced the idea that um, you know, everything's expanding away from every other point and it makes it look like the Earth's in the center, even though it's an illusion because it was unexpected. They had to revise the model. So that is actually what happened. Ozean, what do you think? You think you, you, you agree that's accurate? Um, as far as I know, yeah, I'm not an expert with Hubble. Um, that's what I've heard. Did you know he no also said that, like, he also said that he called like a special position like the earth in the center he said this ascent uh the earth being in a central position akin to ancient civilizations can never be disproven um he said but we disregard that possibility because of the horror of a unique position and he's talking about the implications on many of his other theories and contexts as well but he refers to it as intolerable and horrific he says that the central position can't actually be refuted and then they come up with uh, an idea to say, oh, it's all an illusion that we're in the center. And it sounds kind of like a religion, you know. No, I do have a, re a rebuttal to that. Because um, sure. the ancient religions, the ancient cultures at the time believed that the their concept of world was where they lived. So they thought it was flat where they lived. A lot of them believed the heavens were the skies above them. The underworld or the pillars either was something they floated upon above the waters or were pillars like a house foundation that kept them up from sinking um, below them. But they didn't believe the concept of world was a local thing. Um, and, and a lot of them, they had maps and stuff of their world. So worldview to them was like their cosmology, their gods, their, um, their, their life cycles and stuff like that. It wasn't. So when we, so like, Hubble, when he said something like that, sort of like a presentism view, his concept of world um, was different. So he's looking at it from a presentism view, looking back. So his idea of world in the present time was much different from what the ancients concept of world was. So he should be looking at it, what their concept of world was in ancient time, which is much different than today. If you go to my channel, really Matters different. Now, it is the point. If you go back to my channel, Matters Now, I spent the last week talking about ancient civilizations and their worldviews um, in a little bit of detail. So. Wait, real fast. Someone said, way to misquote Hubble. Like, okay, here's a direct quote. It's on my ex. 
Thus, the density of the nebular distribution increases outwards symmetrically in all directions, leaving the observer in a unique position. Such a favored position, of course, is intolerable. Moreover, it represents a discrepancy with the theory because the theory postulates homogeneity. Therefore, in order to restore homogeneity and to escape the horror of a unique position, the departures from uniformity, which are introduced by the recession factors, must be compensated by the second term representing effects of spatial curvature. There seems to be no other escape. And that is Edwin Hubble, 1937, an observational approach to cosmology, page 46. Oh, no, I didn't misquote him. All right, let's move on from there. Um, and thank you so much, uh, guys, for expounding on that and giving me a chance to have a washroom break myself. Dominic says, Ozian, belief is the enemy of knowing. Substitutes faith for evidence. What would it take for you to question your belief in heliocentrism? Austin, th uh, Austin thoughts. Yeah, I was going to say they're, uh, they're trying to bounce it themselves. But yeah, I, they're asking you, uh, belief is the enemy of knowledge, substitutes faith for evidence. There's not a lot of punctuation here. I'm sorry. What would it take I for you to question your belief in heliocentrism? I think we got it there. Well, obviously, he doesn't know the definition of knowledge. Knowledge is a justified, true belief. So if you if you let if you reject belief, you reject all claims to knowledge because all claims to knowledge are claims to belief. So a justified true belief is a is a belief that you so something you accept is true that is justified through some type of empirical justification. But all empirical justifications are based on our observations of the exper uh, external world. Um, hopefully you have some type of methodology of proving that you know, like methodological naturalism such as scientific method or something like that which is my preferred um empiricism but that's not like but that is based upon um not deduction but induction which is the, to the best explanation it doesn't lead us to proofs science doesn't leave us to proofs um, deduction would leave us to proofs so you can't necessarily say it's knowledge. You could say it's pragmatic knowledge, which is fine. So, well, a rational belief is something that is justified. Um, so I believe that my beliefs are justified. So whether they're true or not, whether they exist as some referent, like externally or not, we can have a debate about. Do I believe most of our bel beliefs are true? Yes. So can we have a debate about them? Absolutely. So what can, can can convince me that the earth is flat? Show me a picture of the earth. All right. All right, man. Hey, everyone go smash the like button. Yeah. We're just going to all sit here and stare at you. <laughs> Everybody smash this... the like button while we stare. Uh, let, let's do it. In... <clears throat> yeah, we're was all going to sit off base with it. it uh, we're we're, we're, like, we're going to sit here and not talk was. until you smash the like button. Oh, man. Well, if we get to 500, like I said, we'll open up a poll for who was your favorite speaker tonight. Uh, right now, we just have a did you hit the like button uh, poll up because over 700 people apparently can uh, vote in our poll, but you can't hit that like button. It's totally free to hit the like button. It doesn't do anything to you. In fact, it brings you great joy. Trust me. Try it out just once. Uh, let's carry on there, guys. And thank you, Witsit, for that. Um, let's see. I am uh, Oz and Wit. Explain Irie's failure. Uh, how much tilt would be required to see the star based on helio versus geocentric predictions? Lastly, what were the results? I'll start with you, I'm Oz. not good with Aries failure, so I'd rather... You know it better than I do, Witsit. It's like an old test, like with the tubes pointing up to try to see light through it is that correct yeah um basically you have you have a, a tube tilted with water in it and uh the angles are different based on the alleged motion of the earth you should see basically the light be displaced once it enters the water if the earth is moving and it should it should uh displace and then you know basically go into the side of the telescope what they saw was that it didn't do that and the only slight displacement went the opposite direction it is a direct refutation of the claim that the earth is moving the fact that it displaced at all 
and went the opposite direction is a major problem for to this day. So it was actually Aries' success, right? But um, <laughs> I've never heard a rebuttal, by the way. In fact, what you'll find out is all the people that talk about the globe Earth and all this, they don't have a rebuttal. Like none of them even know what to say back to that. None of them do. And uh, yeah, so like just to make sure everyone understands, the idea is you're on the Earth, the Earth is is moving, and then you have a, a telescope filled with water, and you look at the star come through the water, right? Well, as it gets into the water, obviously that's a different medium, so then the speed of light changes in relation to that medium. So what should happen as you're moving, the star should be displaced at an angle based on your movement. It should go into the side of the telescope. There's a predicted amount that should happen based on the movement of the Earth. And then what's actually observed is that there's only a slight displacement and it goes the opposite direction, from my understanding. It's been a while since I looked at it, but obviously that's a major... That's a major... I, I thought it had to deal with the ether, though, too, the, the stationary ether that he expected the... Um, yeah, the yeah. change in the light due to the stationary ether. Uh-huh. And he didn't get that predicted measurement. Yeah, but the ether would just be like, it was just assumed to be this absolute in which was measured against. The fact that there was a displacement actually went the opposite way of the prediction not only shows the Earth's not moving, but also shows that there is an ether and that there's a drift within it. Um, well, there could be an ether drift, but it, it, it falsified a, a stationary ether. But it wasn't a very good test, right? So to prove, that's why the Michelson-Morley experiment was a much better test to falsify um the stationary ether all right let's carry on guys uh we actually are only 80 votes away uh from me changing the poll over to preferential speaker poll and uh i'll just say to make it fun uh, whoever wins the preferential speaker poll i'll give an extra minute for the closing statement because that's fun and lets the audience Which interact. don't get it <laughs> lets the audience interact with the speakers but uh, we'll see what happens ozzy and uh, we'll we'll just wait free free palestine asks how do you confirm the distance between us and Polaris 432 light years ago and why not one day light ago please answer CGI globe lovers and no more is it parallax or whatever how, how did they measure know it like in the past like they measure it over time and they like do use math to backtrack to see what it would have been however many years ago in the past Any other thoughts on the other side? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to uh, <laughs> push that one along. I missed um, it. How do they know how far Polaris is? Oh, I don't know. They change all the time. They have no idea. Okay. Uh, Bob yeah. asks, uh, question for both. Why come it be the way it do? <laughs> Thanks, Bob. I don't know if we can really get anything out of that. Why well, can't? Why come it be the way it do? Is what he asked. I, Bob, I'm sorry. I don't think there's a whole lot we can get out of that. Uh, it's it's a fun question in the way you worded it, but uh, uh, I don't think we have a whole lot of meat to dig in there. If you want to put something in the live the chat, Bob, <laughs> uh, maybe he's just asking why is it. Let me give you the benefit of the doubt here, Bob. Uh, why is it that the Earth is in the center? How? Why come it be the way it do? I don't know. I'm I'm trying to help you out, Bob. Bob, put it in the live chat. I don't want to fill in the blanks here. Uh, Bitter truth uh, says, "What's it?" Uh, we we read that one. Um, Jeff asked Austin, uh, "What college gave you a degree?" Um, it's not really relevant, but if you want to talk about any experience you've had, you can go ahead and uh, take that moment. I got a. Athletic and academic scholarship to a private university and then dropped out of college. Never went to class. I just partied a lot and played football. So uh, I don't have, I don't have a college degree, which I'm actually thankful for now. Less debt, less indoctrination. I, I went to, it was a pretty good private university. It gave me a full ride. I just threw it away. I didn't, I just partied and tried to. What position? Girls. Lot receiver slash tight end. I was the tightest end. I was the tightest end on my team too. You're yeah. small for a tight end. I know they try. They. I was slot receiver. 
okay. they tried to they tried to um woke me up and tell me to maybe play tight end so i could get in early as a freshman hmm. but um yeah i was slot receiver because we did meet at the big con four we did yeah you're really tall yeah I, I enjoyed meeting both of you. Uh, I think it was a good I time. think Andrew I think Andrew Wilson was a little intimidated by me. He's funny. Let's not <laughs> let's not go down what happened. To I wanted to be Andrew. Right. Uh, let's say uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're having fun. I know, uh, <laughs> but honestly, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed meeting both of you. And uh, yeah, uh, when it came to my schooling, just as a fun point, I I, I didn't get very far because I was very loud and I just wanted to play guitar. Um, only the music teachers liked me. Uh, <laughs> so I just took all those government tests and they gave me grades. Oh, oh, there you go. Free, free Palestine. Let's say, uh, let's move on to our next uh, question. Uh, actually, you got two here. Free, free Palestine asks, how do you confirm? Oh, that's the first one. Uh, son, sono, sono luminance. I think that's uh, how you luminescence. Say that. Sono luminescence. Sono luminescence. luminescence. Star in a jar scientific experiment. There's water above the firmament. Therefore, stars are underwater. Vibrations of love for flat Earth. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. There's a, there's a star called a uh, star in a jar. I mean, there's a there's a test called star in a jar. It's about sonoluminescence. luminescence. You just introduce sound to water, and what happens is it creates this little bubble that like implodes in on itself and then creates light. It looks just like a star. It's actually very cool. You've never seen it, so it just proposed as a, one, a possible explanation of what could be happening. Literally, just vibration in a fluid medium would create what we perceive to be stars. So um, I shared a screen if you want to. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Well, um, if it's if it's on point, I I, yeah, I unshared it. Respond. Oh, how did I unshare? I want to stop the share. Share. Oh, you want to stop I'll the share? share that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's pretty cool. I wish I could just pull it to my thing. I'll do that. Oh, I can't do it. Never mind. Oh, okay. It looks pretty cool. So. All right. Did you want to pull it up and respond to Witsit, or did you want to carry on? No, no, no. It's no, just he was just supporting what I'm saying. Just look, look okay. up "star star in a jar" if you've never heard of it. Most people have, but it's All pretty right. cool. All right, let's carry on. Free Free Palestine said rockets can't get high enough because of the firmament, and astronauts are only going to land on Epstein Island. Oh my! Uh, save our children. They say Free Free Palestine. <laughs> Earth That's is flat. Like well, well thanks for that yeah that's man like a claim to me yeah i mean um, free palestine man all this what's up with this genocide man oh man all right nathan oh wait did you guys i heard a conspiracy i want to know Ozan, have you heard this supposedly they're discontinuing p1000 one of the reasons is that they have some type of agreement with nasa like a private exclusive uh, contract or something and they're uh now someone said that it's like a it's it's like a like a parameter of the a deal or something i don't know about that but that they discontinue the p1000 which i don't even know what that means but yeah P nikon's discontinuing the p1000 which is the camera that all the flat earthers use um because yeah. it has like one of the most uh the best commercial optical zooms optic. yeah oh you have one nice yeah and something about nasa nice bro I only have a 900, but yeah. Anyway, I thought that was crazy. Like NASA's NASA is pretty ironic, even if it's just like hilarious. Like NASA signs a deal with uh, Nikon P or Nikon, and they're discontinuing their the P1000, and supposedly as part of the deal. I don't know. I think that's I don't, I don't know how true that is. So. Disclaimer: <laughs> I just heard it word of mouth. I just think it sounds crazy. All right, let's well, they'll probably on. come out with a better one. I don't know. Let's see. Nathan Bishop asks, Witsit doesn't get it. He's coming right for you, Witsit, and I know you can handle it. You should totally go do another stand-up comedy in front of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what that's about, Witsit, but uh, Nathan I Bishop. I got arrested for free speech, and people are super lame and think it was, like, cool or something that I got arrested for free speech. No, it wasn't cool. All right. I'm not sure what that was down, about, though. but uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry if that was uh, uh, not a great time. Um, but yeah, let's be here. That's all good. <laughs> okay, I didn't want to. I don't want to stir up bad juju. No, oh. people should go. People should go read my motion to dismiss for facial invalidity, because it, it's it's Did like a win, really though? good motion. You should read it. Did you so, win? Did you win the? No, motion? no. But like, 
the judge didn't even really rebut the arguments. And then everything the oh, government said, she just he, he knocked it down. The judge was like, wrong. He's right. He's right. Like they, they told, they, they did awful. And he, she's like, no, he refuted that here. And he showed you, you were wrong here and all this stuff. But then she just said, but I don't, I'm not going to do it. Which I mean, I was asking her to change the law. I wasn't like trying to yeah. fight to be innocent. Cause I thought like, oh, it's just a fine. I yeah. tried to change the law instead of like fight my guilt right because i i think it's a free speech violation law so all right never i tried i'm placed in manner yeah yeah sorry there rosie and let's uh, carry on we we are more than halfway now so uh thank you once again to our uh, uh speakers for being uh great sports and uh answering all these questions even some of the more pointed juicy ones uh thanks guys uh bitter truth asks once again about your educational background i'm sorry bitter truth we had a question about it i think we got the most out of it so uh, i'm sorry we're going to carry on and i will ask your next question uh just shortly uh siggy sigwald asks what's it not understanding michael michelson morley an experiment done in 1887 and then cherry picking quotes while ignoring there are satellites in orbit right now and is streaming publicly available data every few minutes and gets old really fast so that's why you're here quotes. spending money to talk about how you're watching so whatever i mean this is what i do think is funny is what gets old really fast is that you guys all have like a script that you say and you just repeat it no matter what. There's literally nothing I can say. If I pull up the papers and read it all in context and show you exactly what it says, if we go through the entire Mickelson World experiment, no matter what, you will claim falsely that I cherry pick the quotes and that I misunderstand Mickelson Morley. But no, I completely understand it. Okay, and it's just a fact that there was a predicted friendship value. We did not see that. They threw at it falsified Newtonian gravity. You had to claim the Earth was free falling in a linear orbit, that time expands and slows down, and that matter contracts. You just can't tell. This is all just a fact. So I think it's weird that people lie about that, to be honest. That's what's actually weird. And even, uh, yeah, I don't have to believe fairy tales about space, even if there were satellites in orbit. They use geocentric equations in physics. So, all right. Thanks, Tom, brother. Uh, oh, you had a question there. Did you want to no, it's ge in? geodesic or a bit close enough? No, ge geocentric. Geodesic. Oh, but I'm saying they use geocentric physics and equations. Yeah, you can see it's a linear orbit, but it, it's a geodesic. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's both, right? Like well, the geodesic is linear in your reference frame. Yeah. All right. But it's like the shortest path it takes yes. the least amount of energy. But you're also free falling, so you're going straight in your right. Sort of, yeah, yeah. All right, bitter argue. truth is coming in. I argue with people. It's a philosophical. Anyways, I argue with people about it all the time. Yeah, relativity it's, is just philosophical magic. All right. Well, thank magic. you, fellas. Uh, uh, bitter truth asks, "Wits it? Who says Earth is stationary? Earth is orbiting Sun, and if not rotating Earth, some of the areas will be dark forever." It's not a lot of punctuation know. here. Sorry, bitter truth. I have no idea what that said. He's saying that on a flat Earth, um, that the sun wouldn't, like some places would have to be dark 24-7. Yeah. I'm, all right. Let me try to put some emphasis here on the right syllables, okay? <laughs> Who says Earth is stationary Earth and is orbiting the sun, and if it's not rotating earth some of the areas will be dark forever i tried to do it justice but that's that's best i got obviously if he's actually yeah you're like the earth moving around the uh sun or the sun moving around the earth just a kinematic equivalence even within the mainstream model and if you if you're at are talking about flat earth which he didn't mention and isn't what this is about anyway but obviously there's light attenuation there's an extinction point or limit of light relative to the medium specifically the turbidity that's turbulent and density of that medium there's a radius of light especially with the local light source uh and it's moving now it doesn't sound like we, he's talking about that i kind of disagree with ozin's interpretation it sounds like he's just saying something i don't understand or isn't coherent which is that if the earth is moving around the sun or vice versa that somehow mm. the sun's moving around the earth that there would be areas that are dark forever, but he may be, I don't know. I can't, I couldn't tell you. So there you go. I tried to tell you there's a kinematic equivalence. Um, the sun can just move around the earth and that's what the evidence shows us that it does changes its position throughout the year. 
you think light extinguishes at a certain point? You don't believe in like the inverse square law of light? Well, there's also, yeah, yeah. Well, inverse square law of light's cool, but there's also an attenuation rate of light. And it gets to where, you know, there's no or, or, uh, resolvable information, right? Just like um, we have, you know, you have headlights and then you have fog lights, right? So when, I, when it's foggy outside, how come I can see the car with fog lights, but I can't see the car with just normal headlights? Because the intensity saw- of the light in relation to the medium, because the regular headlights have, a, they attenuate in the medium, right? They absorb and then they have an extinction limit. All right. Awesome. Oh, okay. We'll uh, let That's you okay. Are you sure? Okay. Let's carry on. And uh, I'll just remind everybody in the live chat, we are only 35 likes away and we will open up uh, the uh, poll, which will allow you to vote for your favorite speaker and give them an extra minute on the floor to close their thoughts. So uh, if they'd so desire, Uh, let's see. Toby Walker says, what's it? I heard a a guy named Wang measured linear motion using the speed of light. Can you explain what that means for measurements of the earth's motion? You had your hand up there, Ozian. Is there something you want to say? No, no I, nothing. Okay. What's it? Uh, so I, uh, if you want to repeat that, I can, uh, or if you want to go No, ahead. I got it. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, so he's talking about Wang. He does, uh, that, so it's a linear, linearized Sagnac effect, and he detects linear motion with interferometer. I'm um, guessing that Ozium was raising his hand because they have like, a scripted answer to say back to that, which is that it's just relative motion, but they don't fully understand it. So like, actually, people have tried to explain it from the heliocentric paradigm or from relativity's uh, paradigm, but they admit that they really can't without invoking absolute space and then changing the position of the observer and then creating a, cindric, a, a cylinder coordinate system. However, cylindric, I don't even know, but... Uh, so yeah, that's not that doesn't work because relativity says that space is not absolute and fixed. Now this is what he's asking though. He's saying like, what does it have? What does that mean basically for the model? Um, well, like we said earlier, right? The the Earth's orbit, according to Einstein, is the Earth free falling in a straight path. And and as you said, a geodesic. Well, he calls it in his paper curve linear, curve linear, right? Like literally calls it linear because it free falls in a straight path. So the point is. They said, well, you can't detect the orbit of the Earth, as Mickelson Morley didn't, because it's moving in a straight path, free falling in a straight path. So there's no deviation for the light to measure. Well, now we've proven that you actually can detect and measure linear motion with interferometry, which now directly refutes even the ad hoc excuse that was come up with to explain away the evidence that refuted the Earth is moving. So last thing I'll say to recap it, they claimed the earth, they thought the earth was moving. Measurement showed it wasn't moving. They came up with an excuse to say why you can't measure it even though it's moving. That excuse, even though just made up, has also been refuted with the detection of linear motion with interferometry. All right. James Brown spent $7.77 uh, to mirror Siggy and said, shut up, Siggy. So he's coming after Siggy, who's another person in our live chat. So you spent money to uh, say that. And uh, uh, it, it's funny. I guess Numerology, <laughs> 777 is the number of God. 666 is the number of man. James, I feel like uh, I feel I love sevens. I was going to say, James Brown is not feeling good, I guess, tonight. Ah, In numerology, one, good. threes, and sevens are... One, three, and nines are number of men. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's carry on. Siggy Sigwald, uh, and, and, and don't mind them, Siggy. We appreciate all of your super chats, including uh, including the last one. That's always fun. Uh, it seems like you guys had quite a back and forth in the live chat. So, uh, you know, once again... Appreciate the mods keeping our live chat friendly. One, six, and nine. <laughs> Siggy Sigwald asks, so all of this, because Witsit couldn't develop, mm, that's kind of rude. He said self-esteem okay. is a regular human being. I know you can handle it, but it's just it's just rude. I'm sorry. There's nothing there for us to sink our teeth into. So I read. I didn't question. really hear what he said. That's that's good because it really doesn't add to anything. He I love I love you. I love whoever said that. I love you, man. Everything's gonna be okay. All right, no insulting you, Mr. Monster, I love him. Um, it says, I believe I can see the sun and the planets, they must be real. Furthermore, I can see the other planets are going around the sun, therefore, dot dot dot. I think they're making uh, it seems like they're making a mockery. Maybe you should put this in quotations, but it seems like they're saying, I believe I can see the sun and the planets, they must be real. Therefore, I can see that the other planets are going around the sun, therefore. 
dot, dot, dot. He believes his son is the center of the solar system. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't think anyone disputes that we see Not what sure. people call planets. I don't know if which side he's trying to aim that at, right? But uh, basically, he's making, I mean, I would guess that he's making fun of the idea that you can just say, therefore, we must be going around. We must be a planet that's going around the sun. That, of course, would be ridiculous to, to think that is logical or automatically makes sense or whatever. I mean, uh, but it is what it is, man. You know, but we've falsified <laughs> yeah. the Earth moving through space. That is a fact. And I really think people should let go of their bias and, and research it. It's pretty important. You can tell I've already read this one because I already laughed and uh, we'll just read it anyway. 7 to 10 extracts says, What's it? I think Ozean is trying to get to the center of Uranus. Thanks for proving the Earth is in the center of Yahweh's beautiful creation. All right. I mean, it looks like I have shit on my nose, but I, I, I'm not gay. I, 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 I swear. I only like penises on trans women. That's it. My mind. That is disgusting, Ozzy. You, you, you had to throw that in the debate towards the end. Uh, well, well, yeah, well, yeah, we're getting close to the end for sure. So uh, we've almost got to our likes. I'm going to open up that poll, guys, shortly. Uh, it looks like uh, I disavow. live chat has really I'm not Christian, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Send oh. Cal Grizzly Raider. Oh, we're going to carry on, guys. We're not going to get down in the Oh, you're good. Go ahead. But... Go ahead. But if you guys want to discuss that anytime, you let me know. Senkal Grizzly Raider says, Globers eat corn the long way. Change my mind. Globers. Thanks, Senkal Grizzly Raider, uh, for that visual. Uh, Simon Allen says, a viewer's W. Well, I'm not, I think that means win, viewers W. Um, viewers so, win. Yeah, so thanks for that, Simon Allen. I'm glad you guys are having fun. Uh, we're going to open up the next poll here once we get a question that our uh, our speakers can dig their uh, teeth into so I can actually open that. Mr. Monster says, I can see the surface of the moon with the telescope. It's definitely dusty and not light. <clears throat> You can't tell it's dusty by looking at the moon, man. It's ridiculous. There are there are lunar waves. There are celestial waves in general. Uh, it seems like it's translucent at times. Um, there's recorded situations of stars being seen through it, like even by the Royal Astronomical Society. All of that aside, it does certainly appear a certain way, and uh, could be plasma, could be many things. I think it's pretty asinine to claim you can look at the moon and tell it's dusty. That is just so not true, right? I mean, we have an idea in our mind of what it's supposed to be, and you can think of that when you look at it, but that's just super weird to me, so I don't know. Nope, it's the light for the nighttime. I don't know what it is. It'll be plasma. I don't think people's personal perceptions of what it is is stupid. I don't agree with his personal perspective that it's dusty. I don't see how he can reach that conclusion, but that's the conclusion he's reaching. But this idea of lunar waves and stuff, has anybody ever done that from two entirely different observation points using two two or more different cameras um, in two entirely different locations pointing at the moon at the same time? Well, no, because he had to document the moon... A it's just a ridiculous request. He had to document the moon for insane periods of time to catch them. And what people tried to say was that it must be from a plane or a jet. You can literally look at it and prove that there is no such thing at or vibrations. all. Vibrations. Vibrations of what? His 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 tripod. Vibrations will make it look like a wave goes across the moon. Yeah, it could well, be an artifact soon, of the camera. As soon as someone can replicate that, I'll consider that a an option. That's not I'm, how it works. I, I did on a video. That, you replicated the lunar wave by moving a tripod. Um, with other devices, but anyways, not, you ever seen it, not bro? Moving it, yes. Do you yes, know it also? Me. He also ended up catching it go across the whole sky. The sky is um, fluid, man. It has it, fluid like properties. Which even makes more sense. Why is it just him, and why can't we replicate it in multiple locations with different cameras? Why is it just one guy? Why is it not being replicated in multiple locations? I don't know that it's just him. I don't know. Then it should be replicated at the same time in multiple locations, is my point. Sure. So it's just one guy. Let's replicate it. I mean, I, I'm always for more replication, dude. Well, I'm, then, I'm all... 
there's just one dude with a camera who's making a claim and you're just accepting it as true? No, I just, I saw the video and I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. I've never heard a sufficient response to it other than to try to come up with made up baseless excuses that are easily disproven. God. Like it was a plane or something. Like so if I just, if I just post a CGI and you just, and I know I, him personally. I don't believe it's CGI. I didn't claim it was some type of, well, there could be, proof. it could be multiple explanations for what it is that rather than a wave across the sky. Okay. Uh, is that one of the explanations that it could be? Be multiple explanations, including Test that, it. including Test that there's a fluid-like medium up there. Test it. You can't even say it out loud. You have a you have a motivation for it being a fluid-like medium. Uh, well, no, it how, just seems how, it seems to be how consistent. How come you can't? How come when I look at the sky every night, I don't see a fluid? I don't see it. How come I don't? Someone see said it? like fifty people have filmed it. Are you sure? Why are you claiming it's just him? Are you sure? Did, how many? We should have a poll for that. How many people have seen the sky? Cause a wave across the sky. I've, How many people you know, just stare at the moon I, for like five hours at a time? I used to go lay out staring at the sky all night long. Okay. Okay, okay. dude. You haven't? Let's. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Let's carry on, guys. Uh, we're going in a circle here. So, uh, Jesus Morris says, uh, Ringo uh, had an unfortunate relationship with his wife. Well, we'll I'll look into it. Uh, I, I don't know anything about that. Doesn't I, make I, his. I hate when people ruin. It rock doesn't stars make playing. his banjo playing any worse. Banjo. Yo, real playing. fast. Let me let me read this off. Nikon is claiming parts acquisition problems for the P1000, and oh. and it's conspicuous time in that they signed a contract with NASA or future outfitting of the Artemis program. So not directly related, but like interesting timing, right? Pull the P900 off for parts and then sign a deal with NASA same time to be helping with the Artemis program. But, you know, whatever conspiracy right. doesn't. Well, thank you for uh, uh, injecting there with it because I couldn't really no read your uh, question verbatim there, Jesus, because it's an, a an accusation I don't think I'm able to make on air. Uh, and the Beatles are a bit bigger. Is it about my sexuality? I I'm okay with it. No, I was going to say the Beatles are bigger, I think, than modern day debate, so we won't say anything about them. Uh, uh, Mr. E-Man <laughs> says, uh, the Walal expedition duplicated the verified the Eddington experiment in 1922 okay. obviously witsit is ignorant of this fact so he, what do you he, what do you wait, wait say it again say it again well hall uh, yeah i'll try to clean it up because uh, some of these can you spell working. it the wall all w-a-l-l-a-l-l -L 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 expedition duplicated and verified the eddington experiment in 1922 Obviously, okay. Witsit is ignorant of this fact, they say. So they're coming right at you, Witsit, with this question. Well, I can't it's funny because it. you're saying verified it, and literally, Eddington said, oh, man, this experience, this observation is a major problem for relativity. It didn't match what was predicted to happen, and it has to happen if relativity is true. And the vast majority of the plates didn't show it at all, the photographic plates. And then they say a couple of them kind of did after corrections, but they lost them. Eddington himself said it was a problem and didn't match the predictions. You're saying that it, it confirmed it, right or corroborated it corroborated what the fact that it didn't match at all i'll have to look into that one specifically i don't know from what i remember for one the very phenomenon itself can be uh, thoroughly explained with classical mechanics and things like plasma uh, but it, it, outside of that we have to establish it's a real legitimate phenomena to actually have to explain from my understanding most of it, like all the subsequent tests were also off and rarely observed and stuff like that but i, I can look into the uh look into it but one thing i know for sure people should stop saying that the 1919 eddington experiment proved it because that isn't true at all that is a blatant revision and mischaracterization of history and bro if you guys are telling the truth you should make sure to stop lying about things because it's just gonna hurt your cause anyway so all right. I, I don't i don't know you're right i don't know that much about the 1922 test though i'd have to look into it Let's carry on. And uh, I will say I opened up the poll uh, for you to vote for your favorite speaker. Uh, but I do hope that we receive those 10 likes to get to 500. We were so close and I figured this was a good time to open it. So I, I sure did. So vote for your favorite speaker and we'll give them an extra minute uh, to expound on their ideas at the end of our debate. Joshua Jamie asks, saying we are in the center of the perceivable universe is misleading and irrelevant to where we actually are located in the universe. The answer right now now is we don't know uh, the evidence right now is that 
all astronomical observation ever shows that the Earth is in the center. We made interferometry measurements that are over 10 times more sensitive than it needs to be to measure the Earth's assumed orbit. It didn't measure it because the Earth is not moving. And that basically what modern cosmology now has is uh, the universe must be expanding in all directions and accelerating to create the illusion that the Earth is in the center, which means there has to be some incredible energy force energy source that's causing it to do that we can't find it it's nowhere to be found it can't be defined no one can even like understand what it could be and then when we applied vacuum energy to is off by 10 to the 120th power greatest discrepancy in modern quote-unquote science we have no idea no evidence for it all it just has to be there because well it has to be and then of course dark matter problem hubble tension problem modern cosmology is a complete and total disaster because they will not even accept the evidence that's right in front of them that the earth is in the center so just because you say we don't know well yeah actually the evidence has shown us that the earth is in the center consistently we falsified claims of motion which means you have only one option almost done only one option that's that the earth is in the center and because it doesn't have the dark matter and dark energy problems it's a minimum of 96 percent more viable so stop ha- you know just stop having a bias all right not good Good to resolve the problem of dark energy, dark matter. So 90, 96% more viable. And the Hubble const, the Hubble law says that any place in the universe would appear to be in the center of the universe. I know that's what you said. But in order to claim that, you have to claim that the universe is accelerating and expanding in all directions, which requires dark energy, but has never been found and was off by 10 to the 120th power I, with a predicted value. So you understand I just, the point. I wait, just wait, wait. Explained, we don't need dark energy. We don't need so dark much. energy. I just explained Gupta's paper that just released like this month does away with dark energy. It, it, it accepts CCC and tired light to explain uh-huh. the model. And the universe is 26 billion years old and does away with dark energy and dark matter. That's not a new idea. Like they, they tried I to know dub- it's not they're, new. They're, they tried to double the age of the universe like a year ago because of Hubble's observations. I know. And he and got... Tire- he- it's funny, though, because I, we've pointed out as flat earthers that redshift could be because of attenuation of light, which is what tired light is. And we get ridiculed by everyone. I don't know what physicist you just brought up, but Gupta. that just proves my point further that your entire model is a disaster and it's falling apart. But if I, the Earth is in this... Okay. I don't accept it as true. I, I, I've just given... I've just seen... There are other possible worldviews that don't... Like the include- Earth being in the center? All right, let's... That don't include dark energy and dark matter that don't require that all that exists is the Earth. You have to have dark energy to claim the Earth just appears to be in the center because of expansion. And to say that it looks no. like it's in the center, but it's not in the center requires expansion. I, That's just a fact. I just gave an example of the model that doesn't include dark energy and dark matter. Does it C- include C- expansion? C- Does it include expansion? It includes expansion, but it doesn't okay. include dark energy and dark matter. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's carry well, on. Then guys. it has to. Yeah, whatever. We'll just stop. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I know you guys got lots of thoughts, and uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna try to carry on. Uh, Cole Wilman, uh, Wilheim, sorry, and we'll just try to keep this uh, to you. Wits at just because this is their first super chat. So thank you so much for your participation at Modern Day Debate. What is a meteor on flat Earth? And we'll just let you answer that one, Wits. There's like basically no actual evidence of rocks falling from the sky. Um, there are craters which have been observed to happen, say, when certain water actually comes out from underneath the ground. That's a real phenomena. That's for sure a real thing. Um, and it makes sense because as the water comes up, it gives you like an equal distribution of the water. So you have like like a symmetrical circle. Uh, the claim that the rocks came and hit the ground uh, has no actual evidence because conveniently what it says is, well, when you go look at the crater where the meteor hit it, all the rock got disintegrated, so you won't see any pieces of rock or anything. It's all gone. And, oh, it may have come in at an angle and stuff, but it exploded, so it makes it look like it's evenly distributed. And the entire idea of a meteor was literally predicted in a science fiction book before it was ever even claimed to exist, including the craters, where the craters were ever even claimed to be discovered. So it's it literally, meteors were predicted in a science fiction book Long before they even claimed to have discovered the first crater, we don't ever see rocks actually falling from the sky. As for meteor showers, they look like electrical discharges. They're cyclical. We have six uh, radiant sources for the for most of the sporadic meteor showers, right. which uh, doesn't work in your model anyway. 
Thank you so much, What's it? Icy Talba says, always, always, always use NASA's worldview to view your satellite images. It's all there for you, just for your future debates. I think they're being cheeky. Uh, and Icy Talba, thank you. I, I've read your NASA. super chat. Did you have thoughts, Ocean? I didn't think we'd have yeah, too much NASA, there. NASA's not a worldview. Okay. Uh, like said. Any other thoughts? No, no. NASA is fake and gay. Okay. Joshua J. I didn't know it had his sexuality, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, now you do. NASA literally says NASA is gay and I brags about it and having. I watched your. Videos. I watched your video. They they are accepting of people of uh, multiple. It, it just says styles. NASA. It says NASA's gay. So I'm gonna. I'm, are you bigoted? Or are you gonna let NASA be gay? NASA says they accept people of multiple life. NASA styles. says we are gay. All right, let's carry on with it. Uh, this has nothing to do with the <laughs> geocentrism. I watched your, don't I watched bigoted, your video. Bro. I, wa I watched your video. Don't be bigoted, bro. It Let NASA be gay, bro. All right. What is it, 2024, man? All right, before I mute you guys, this has nothing to do with what we've been talking about. Uh, don't, don't make me go dad mode on you guys. We've had a lot of fun. Joshua Jamie says, BBC Earth has extensive HD aerial video journalism of Antarctica landscape and wildlife thoughts. Cool. Awesome. Antarctica wildlife thoughts over there. Well, they, they did a, um, isn't there a series of that you can go watch of Antarctica wildlife? Yeah. You can also go watch BBC. You can also watch Mr. Beast. What, dude? Like, seriously, you think that proves something? Yeah, 24 hour sun in an hour. It doesn't like show the sun for 24 hours. There's other videos to do. I accept no. his testimony. It's all fake. Okay. He didn't right. see, he didn't even claim he said it was daylight. He didn't claim he saw the sun itself. Let's you don't move think on. Testimony, sorry, yes. You don't think testimony evidence is evidence? He didn't claim to see the sun itself for 24 hours. But he did and his friend did. Let's carry on. No, Let's just daylight, not sun itself. Anyway. All right. I was going to say, let's carry on, I suppose. But yeah, let's. I should start wrapping my answers. Oh, you want to start wrapping your answers? I was yep. playing uh, I was playing D&D &D as a bard earlier. And every time I gave bardic inspiration, I was trying to come up with some rhymes. All as right. right knows, I can't sing. I, okay. I'm going to rhyme all my answers if I can. I was gonna say, uh, you you can you can rap probably better than I can. I, I I only sing. I can't rap. I just I just sing hardcore. So Mr. E Man, uh, and I try not to. I I, I can't every, sing very good. Huh? Every time somebody asks me to sing backup, I'm always just like right at the front, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to hang back, but I'm a lead singer. I can't help it. Mr. E Man asks, why does Witsit not agree to debate McToon on celestial? navigation i didn't know about this uh, is that something that's happening or is uh, you know that that's say? obviously fake news i can fake news you fake news who runs the world it's hey i'm not gonna <laughs> rhyme yet but check this out man check this out so mc tune is lying we fully exposed him. He then reached out to James and claimed I was asking him to do the debate All and right. just waiting for James to set hold it up. On, well, hold on, hold okay. On. Well, he shouldn't be lying. Then. Let this person's not. This person's just saying something about McToon. He's Let's saying it because he's heard MC Toon say it. So, yeah, that's why. I right. never challenged him to debate. Don't debate him out of principle. He's talked about my daughter and how I should have her taken away. And supported comments like that. So out of principle, I do not talk to him, including FTFE. So let's just drop it. Please stop asking about it. All right, I think the record's been made clear, and I uh, understand that what's it, so let's carry on. Free Free Palestine says, The axis of evil is an astronomical term that destroyed all heliosexual wet dreams. Earth is seriously in the center of the whole universe. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um... I don't know if there's any commentary we can have on that Free Free Palestine, except for maybe a couple of laughs in the live stream. <laughs> uh, the axis of evil is an astronomical term that is destroyed by the heliosexual wet dreams. Earth is seriously the center of the whole universe. Well, thank you, Free Free Palestine. Um, if anybody wants to jump in on the panel, you uh, can. I, I can. I always had to look this up. The axis of evil. It's a Cosmic background radiation. It's anisotropic distribution where it intersects. It should be it should have no preferred direction, which is isotropic. 
it should be homogenous, evenly distributed. But we saw that it wasn't completely evenly distributed. There was an area that was like bumpy, basically uneven distribution. And it had a preferred direction. It was anisotropic. And that preferred direction was straight towards the earth. And then it intersected on the earth. So it was called the axis of evil because it was like contrary to the cosmological prediction that it should have been random without a preferred direction and evenly distributed. And then that 23.4 degrees that people claim is the tilt of the earth. That was, that was uh, observed right way out deep in space. This anisotropic energy was at that angle way out past, you know, anywhere it should be. If it was just the earth tilted, it should only be on the local solar system scale. So, uh, yeah, falsified the heliocentric model. They called it evil because, you know, that's how science works. You call observation and evidence evil. It's really scientific. It just changed the paradigm from the heliocentric model to a more universe concept of the um, model, expansionary model and stuff like that, right? So well, well, you agree that if the Earth is tilted, it's a ball that's tilted. Right. And then it makes things look like it's tilted. That's why they say that the sun is on its ecliptic plane, right? Because the earth is actually tilted. So it makes the sun look like it's tilted. Right. But, but what I'm all, saying is they relative, saw that dude. tilt. They saw that tilt way out into space. It should only oh. be on the local solar system skill. It refutes it. Right. And it shows that the earth's in the center with the anisotropic inhomogeneous distribution right. centered on the earth. Wait, wait. Somebody in chat, live chat, before the debate started said, said that you lose the debate if you say bro or dude so just so i can lose the debate i'm going to say hey bro how you doing dude um but yeah yes but bro. yeah they can't just... pick they can't make up their mind either it's that i'm too casual and say bro too much or i use too big of words and and i say can't... do, all, do oh, it all the time one thing i've learned with it is that there's no pleasing people either there is none ryan shouldn't inject as much as he does or ryan should inject more there's yeah. no healthy balance uh for the people and uh and that want to complain sure. so if, if, if exactly. you're somebody who wants to complain have at it but understand we see you and we understand exactly what you are whiners all right cole willman says at witsit what is a meteor already answered that like several um, times yeah i feel Rock. like I, 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 wait, wait. same question but I, I feel like i feel part. like i answered it but you didn't listen but they are not real they were predicted or it was a prediction in a book that's science fiction. There you All go. right, let's con let's continue on. Darth Jar Jar says, uh, "Witsit, have you come up with a testable, accurate model of the shape of the Earth if it is not a globe?" Off topic, but let's give Witsit an isolated one minute. Mm, not sure why they got a hate, but. I just know they lied about this place, and uh, I would have to know the entirety of it to claim a shape. So mm. I'm pretty cool just knowing that the Earth is not a ball with a radius value of 3,900 and what is it? Eight. Something eight? Three. <laughs> okay, I tried. Anyway, like I don't know what the shape of the Earth is, man, because I don't know what the entirety is, what the dimensions are, whatever. Flat's a general description, right? There are many plane shapes. It could be a plane triangle, plane circle, plane square, plane rectangle, right? Those are all plane shapes. So no, I don't I don't know what the shape is. Why you hate in okay, let's go. All right. Robin Webster uh, says Ozian is correct, so he wins. Uh, did you have anything you want to say to Robin Webster? I'll give you a, it's just a fan chat, so I'll give you 15 seconds if you want to say something to Robin. She's biased. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> 39.59. Yeah, I think it's 30. Oh, I could have made it rhyme. 39.58.8, I think is what it is. Dang it. That's why I stuttered because I wanted to get the, uh, whatever. Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, you're trying to be all of that, but you ain't it. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not, man. I, I forgot. Rhyme. I, I choked. <laughs> I choked on the 39.58.8. Do you believe? <laughs> do you do you believe in the outer lands, aliens like some I, of the I don't know. Earthers do? I, I don't. There may there may be more land. I mean, it, it would certainly make sense to hide it from people if there is. There could be more land in the southern oceans. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't believe in aliens at all. This is sort of weird. <laughs> no Maybe ways. they exist somewhere. But I don't believe here. in stuff. I don't. I don't really think I believe in aliens either, my brother. 
<laughs> let's carry on there, guys. And don't mind what I just said in the live chat. I, you know, me and Witsy, we get along famously, and uh, I was just rap battling him for just one one brief second. It was fine. It was fun. Matt Buris says, Witsit, I love you so much, bro. Don't take your foot off this guy's neck. You've got way more support than you think, buddy. Word salad is yummy for us flat earthers. I'm not sure what they're trying um, to say there, but it's for you. Did I yeah, thank you so salad? much. Damn, I just did. did. 15 seconds what? for Witsit. He's got a if fan it, chat. If it's sincere, then thank you, man. And uh, obviously what I found out is people... You make like kind of, uh, I mean, higher level points, right? That are kind of complex, um, and you use very specifically technical terminology. Like, I don't know why, but you can never learn something from a flat earther, right? Because they're stupid, right? Like they're the stupidest people ever. So, in order to avoid that, maybe you didn't know something or don't know how to answer something, they just try to dismiss it as word salad. But um, it's all good, man. You know, who cares? I, I understand I understand all these concepts you talk about because I spend a lot of time listening to what you talk about. So I, I don't say you say word salad because you use unconventional language, but it's not language that's not understandable. All right. Thank you, man. Yeah. Last super chat before we move uh, into closing our Q&A uh, question there, and then we will move into our closing statements. Anthony uh, Sikant says, does Woodsit ever lose a poll on modern day debate? I can't remember the last time you did, but uh, uh, generally our audience uh, has a big hankering for Woodsit. So uh, we appreciate you coming out and uh, uh, having the discussion, Woodsit. Uh, I, can, I can answer go that. Go ahead. Will you? William Harris, you lost William Harris's poll. I think that I did, was the that only did one not I've win. seen. You mean William Harris, the guy that went the after show and he said, oh, well, yeah, I don't think the audience is smart enough to understand logic, so I intentionally use fallacies and appeal that to guy. emotion to try to trick them into thinking that I didn't, that I won. Well, it, he won that poll, <laughs> so it worked. I just, what, was the question like who won the debate? I hate those. People don't win or lose debate. I hate those polls. Yeah, well, I it think should he, be about like, learning. Yeah, remember this, the other guy just said in his super. He said, uh, "Ozian is correct. That means he won." Like that's not how that works either, right? Like yeah. it does. You can you can be correct and debate it terribly and use fallacies and your argument is trash and you can still be correct. But so then I guess if I'm going to close out this poll and and in. By any case, you have won that extra minute. Um, we will say, I, I put up the poll as who was your favorite speaker. Um, you know, if you interpret that as who was the most palatable speaker. That's uh, probably a good way to, that's probably a good way to. Yeah, uh, y y because I, at the end of the day, uh, uh, no matter whether you agree or disagree with people, there's not going to be an end of people that you agree or disagree with on any number of things, whether that's your favorite Star Wars character or these topics that we talk about here. So uh, the main thing that we want to try to establish is that we learn how to talk with people that we disagree with. So Witsit, you did win the poll, 67%. Uh, voted Witsit as the favorite speaker and 33% for Ozian. So Ozian, we will give you a, a minute here to close your thoughts on the debate here. Just one second. Uh, yeah, one minute. I just wanted to check to make sure we didn't have any other questions. One minute on the floor for you, Ozian. I'm on much to say. I'm hosting an after show on Matters Now. Anybody here is welcome. We can only have 10 people on our panel. So if you want to come hang out on a panel, please do. Wits it, you're invited. Unless you're hosting your own after show, I know you do that too. Um, with that, um, I think the idea of centeredness has more to do with our value in the cosmos. I think we talked about that often, about what's special about us. And I don't think it matters about our physical location in the universe to give ourselves value and purpose and meaning and i think this is what the debate is really about and i expected wits it to win because he's a great public speaker and i'm just a midget so anyways thank you so much that's it all right uh thank you so much ozian for being here and uh yeah no need to be hard on yourself we appreciate you here at modern day debate uh, and i appreciate you buddy uh I, no mm -hmm. matter what indifferences we may have had in the past i i still enjoy you quite a bit when we uh get to hang out here uh over to you uh what's it you got two minutes on the floor all right cool so 
It's pretty simple, man. You know, obviously you don't feel like you're moving or anything, right? Like the default is that everything is moving around us. Look at the sun, look at the moon, look at the stars, whatever. They claim that we are actually moving and it's just an illusion. But what they didn't tell you is that the people that came up with the belief that the earth is not in the center, right? So that we're going around the sun, they literally worshiped the sun. Literally. So like watch the documentary Helio Sorcery as well as the principal and you'll find out though and Helio Sorcery breaks it down. You can research it yourself. They worship the sun. They thought it was symbolic of enlightenment and illumination. And so they were like, well, we must all be going around the sun since it's like the most powerful, most important thing. That is weird. That is creepy. That is not science whatsoever. And they track their religion all the way back to the mystery schools, all the way back to Horus, et cetera. So that's the inception of it. Then what happens? Well, we have... Copernicus, Kepler, Newton, you can actually get Kepler's laws from Newton, so it's not even important, that's not even a cause claim, doesn't work, gets refuted, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, like the last minute, this is basically what's happened, is that the evidence, it, it was one thing to say, well, we worship the sun, and we believe the sun's so special, let's claim we go around it, to moving to the point where we actually directly refuted it. Okay, and we've made precise measurements that have falsified the claim that the Earth is moving. It's shown that it's stationary. So what happens is consistently the geocentric prediction is met, and then the heliocentric model changes its model to say, oh, well, now our new model is what the geocentric model predicts. Trust me, that's how it works. And so everything is an illusion that doesn't work. So we've made precise measurements that have falsified the claimed motion of the Earth is stationary. It's in the center. That's why everything in the universe looks like it's in the center. Last thing, that explains why... We don't need dark matter, dark energy, or all these other crazy problems with cosmology. Because if the Earth's in the center, you don't have that problem. So why don't we just accept it for what it is? Maybe you are significant. It'll be okay. That is time. Well, thank you so much, Ozian, and thank you so much, Witsit, for your closing statements. A big round of virtual applause for both of our speakers. Uh, if you guys are having after shows, I encourage our audience to check the links to our speakers in the live chat. Ozian has already stated that he will be having a live show afterwards, and uh, Witsit maybe uh, as well. So check out Ether his Cosmology, page. Ether Cosmology, Alan Space Audits. If I think that they may have an after show. All right. Well, thank you so much, Witset. So you know where to uh, find the other side of our uh, argument tonight if you want to hear more. So thank you to everybody who is hanging out at Modern Day Debate. I'm going to close out the show, and we will be back for more juicy debates going forward. Uh, in the meantime, you can enjoy my lovely demo of me screaming at you. Uh, this is Greed, and this is my band, Light and Shade. Because this is all I get to do at Modern Day Debate. It's just a little bit of this. So uh, enjoy, everybody. And uh, thanks, Witsit. Thanks, Ozian. It's been a pleasure. Love. See you, Ryan.
Hey, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Uh, debating uh, the geocentrism uh, with Ozian and Widset. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, what we were able to provide out of the debate. And make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. I'm just checking into the live chat right now because I don't want to forget uh, to thank some of our regulars that come out here, uh, like Maximiliano Villa, who has uh, a membership, Kent Speak, Flat Sabbath, uh, thank you guys so much for your membership, and al also keeping the live chat uh, lively. Uh, we appreciate you guys, especially when we uh, have these debates. And uh, a big shout out to our mods, uh, Hannah, Batman, and also MXXD. Uh, once again, uh, you guys hanging out in the live chat, uh, very consistently I can rely on you guys uh, to make sure that we're keeping things friendly and keeping things civil uh, so I appreciate you guys uh, Catherine MC the name of the bands light and shade uh, if you just check out my YouTube link you'll see the uh, uh, the music that uh, most of it was from uh, m my musical partner who has a Juno award which is a big thing in Canada and not so much in America um, so he, he does all the guitar playing and the drum, uh, organizing and stuff. I, I don't think he plays drums. I think he just, uh, programs them, but still it's a lot better than what we were doing before with just the electronic drum kit, uh, and live, uh, recordings for modern day debate. So, uh, yeah, I am glad that, uh, some of the people do enjoy that. Uh, but honestly, that's just my little side thing, uh, that I have fun with. Uh, ultimately, it's about the speakers. We have uh, great speakers at Modern Day Debate, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's a lot of things that are getting discussed um, that are, are either important, or if you don't think they're important, the most important thing that you can get out of this is maybe a way to have these discussions. Or if these discussions get out of whack and you're like, you know what, I wouldn't want to have a discussion the way that this is breaking down on Modern Day Debate, once again, take away from that what you will uh you know there's there's all kinds of fun and things that you can learn from engaging in spaces like this uh whether you're hitting the after show or you're watching the uh the speakers uh, in their spaces that they're hanging out in you're going to have i think a great time navigating the sea of ideas um and that's what we're trying to provide to you guys at modern day debate is uh, is an avenue in which you can uh, you know, navigate these sea of ideas and also uh, people that will provide those ideas and then you can kind of chew on them as you will so uh, yeah I'm gonna try to keep on rocking their flat Sabbath uh, that's all I know how to do <laughs> so uh, once again everybody if you're still hanging out in the live chat uh, hit the like button uh, you know, I, I do see we passed 500 quite a bit ago, and I figured we would, and we gave that extra minute to our speaker, which I, I personally think was fun. Maybe we'll keep on uh, trying to do that uh, going forward. And uh, yeah, I, I do have another song that I'm working on that's maybe a little less dark uh, to in intro our, our debates. Uh, you know, I, I heard a couple more fun theme songs earlier and I, w I was thinking man you know it, doing a song like greed is is really dark to open up the stream uh, where we're trying to debate and, and and like I said potentially teach people how to have better conversations so if we started out with a really dark and kind of evil sounding song uh, maybe that won't uh, won't translate so well so um, you know I'm glad that you know, for whoever's been enjoying it is enjoying it, but I'm going to try to get something that's a little bit more uh, lighthearted potentially going forward. 
uh, so that we can, uh, like I said, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe not turn people off in the uh, the sense of uh, how dark it sounds. I, I am trying to read these as uh, as we go along. Uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just at you. There you go. I'm just gonna at you, Carolina. There you go. Uh, and thank you as well, Dean. Uh, appreciate you guys coming out. Um, and once again, uh, big big shout out to our mods. You guys don't know how much they mitigate in the chat. Uh, of course, I can see, uh, y you know, this has been, y you know, mitigated by X, Y, Z, and I appreciate you guys. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to close it out. Uh, I'm tired. It's 2.20 here in Nova Scotia. Uh, I don't mind dark music, says Batman. Uh, of course you don't mind dark music, Batman. You're Batman. Batman likes dark stuff. All right. Uh, before I get down into... Uh, <laughs> into uh, impression lane thank you everybody i really appreciate it we're going to be back in a few days and uh, once again if you guys want to participate in these debates if you're looking at speakers and you're thinking oh my god i could have brought up this argument and this argument i could have held that person's feet to the fire email me or james uh so you can email james at modern day debate at gmail.com or you can email me at bc.adt at outlook.com. Um, both ways are a great way to get into this sphere, and we can uh, get you guys debating uh, against people that uh, you might think that, like I said, you can hold your uh, hold their feet to the fire. So, um, you know, uh, it, it don't feel don't feel too daunted by this space. Uh, it's very friendly as far as uh, you know. I, when I'm when I'm hosting, I try to keep things to uh, what our speakers ask. Uh, so sometimes people will say, "Oh, you know, Ryan's not injecting when this person says this crazy thing that I don't like." But a little do they know that we may have agreed beforehand that we're going to let certain things slide. Uh, so. Um, yeah, uh, once again, Catherine MC, uh, it's just through the uh, my YouTube there. Um, I think if you look it up on YouTube itself, uh, Greed by Light and Shade, you can find it. But I'm not here just to uh, sm uh, self-promote <laughs> uh, as much as uh, I want to provide you guys with uh, good theme music to uh, get jazzed for the debates. So uh, let's uh, try to keep it friendly, everybody. Uh, let's... Uh, hit the notifications for any upcoming debate debates that you see on modern day debate I, i'd love to see you guys and uh once again email me uh or james if you want to uh participate and in the meantime uh I'll, i'm just gonna switch it back over here because i have to go to bed and we're we're nearing on 2 30 now uh, my time so uh, uh good night can speak michael pun sean chatney uh catherine mc Halco, sean chatney again uh, i see you're just active there uh so uh good night and uh, we'll see you next time cheers